Welcome to the June 13th uh, Planning Board work session. We have two public hearings tonight. We're going to do before the hearings White Pine Knolls and uh, if we have time, Elmwood Apartment and Four Oaks because the next one is Wayne Scott Commercial and that's gonna take a while. Okay, Thank, um, the neighbor brought to our attention that the covenants prohibit construction on 15% uh, slopes. Uh, we required a survey showing the slopes uh, and there are um, such areas in the new building envelope. Uh, the board will need to either relocate back to the original envelope, amend the covenants to allow structures on 15% slopes, or as a potential compromise, relocate the envelope um, roughly 50 to 100 feet back uh, to soften the impacts on the neighbors. Um, depending upon what you choose to do, you may need revegetation. Um, you should also note that it's already regraded and excavated, um, as well as cleared on top of being cleared. And then again, with any modification, change of circumstances. But basically, this area now that had the slopes, um, they've already cleared it and they've already excavated it and those slopes are gone. So um, it was recommended as a compromise because the neighbor is concerned about you know the home moving forward when it's his understanding that there's the um, building would be in the back to maybe move it sort of halfway and do partial revegetation in the front. You could also require, um, leave it where it is and there is room it appears for additional revegetation. However, this clearing line is now long, no longer accurate because there was excavation done since this was prepared. Can you enlarge that for us, please? Yeah. So we don't have an idea where the <coughs> existing uncleared area begins. It's, it's roughly the clearing, there is a clearing line shown on here, but it's roughly the same. But since the time of this um, excavation has occurred, um, these aren't the best pictures in the world, but um, I'll get them. Um, you can see substantial, you know, excavating and, and regrading of that area. They, they've begun excavating to the uh, foundation, so. In doing that, the clearing line expanded a little bit, but it's not much more than what you had previously seen that was on the aerial. You mean additional clearing was done? I would assume, mm -hmm. just simply by virtue of the fact of pushing those those piles out. What I'm saying is, you know, the area was cleared of the trees, but then they, they dug in and excavated, and in doing that, they're pushing piles to the periphery. I would assume the clearing in increased a little bit, but we don't have an updated survey that shows the condition today. Is there anyone here who's involved in this project? Come on up, we'd like to speak to Stephen Garten, I'm the homeowner. John Puplow, project manager. So just, I understand that, I don't know if my neighbor is here today, I understand his concern is that when he looks out from his driveway, he can now see my driveway. But just to be clear, the purpose of the uh, limitations on grading is not for aesthetic, it's to, um, my understanding is, it's to minimize the disturbance to the land. Um, so moving it back would be, first of all, uh, an economic hardship for us. We've already gone through and delayed this project four months based upon moving the building envelopes based on the original building permit. Plus it would cause us to have to re-clear this entire area because the new building envelope is up here. So you'd basically double the amount of clearing and then we'd also have to regrade as well. So the, in terms of the disturbance to the land, it would be twice the disturbance that we currently have. So just so everyone's aware, there was a stop work order because this was the wrong building envelope, it was not in the, and then when we discussed it last, we approved you to continue in this location, but the covenant restrictions weren't checked. So the stop work order was lifted. You started your excavation, which was legal. And then it was discovered there was a second problem. And so you have a now a new stop work order, I believe. That's currently. correct. So have you, in the course of that period when you were excavating, did you do any additional clearing of trees? We no. did. We, well, we, well we, we have clearing up to the clearing limitations. Clearing. There's a, Did you cut more trees in order to do the excavation? No. 
Right now, there's a, a silt fence for the clearing limits, and we don't have any fill or clearing past those limits, which is here, this small dotted line here. So the neighbors suggested, we'll go to the board in a sec. Neighbor, um, the neighbors suggested either going back to the original building envelope, which the board did not want to do, or moving the house further back, which would mean additional clearing. In other words, how, where you have your swimming pool behind the house, how close is that to the tree line now? Well, right now the clearing limits is about probably five to 10 feet beyond the pool patio. So anything pushing the house further deeper into the lot would involve clearing more, doing more clearing. I mean, if it's an aesthetic issue, uh, and um, if my neighbor were here, I'd, I'm happy to put some vegetation into, you know, improve his views of my home if that's the issue. Right. I, it, it seems, I and mean, we, by the way, we, we did offer, uh, after the original stop order, we did offer to move the house back. Mm -hmm. And I think the board knows that it was decided not to move the house because that would cause additional clearing. Right. So we made that offer, and then that was, rejected or right. which I agree is, is the proper position and based upon that we've already gone and we've we've spent a lot of money excavating clearing the land it just seems a disservice to have to further cut down more trees disturb more land mm -hmm. because of someone's view of the land which is not why the covenant's there the covenant is there not based upon to improve someone's view of my home the right. covenant there is there to, to minimize regrading so let, we'll go to the board and see what everybody thinks. Thank you. I do have a, I do have a question for you. Yeah. Um, since I do have this type of insurance letter, I do not believe that type of insurance letter. It's a public document. Thank you. When, when did you acquire the property? Um, I acquired it um, last, almost a year ago now. No, normally, normally it's not, it's not relevant. This is a really, I guess it's time to start, Joe. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's a really tricky situation because I, I agree with you that Clearing more trees is not a good answer for, um, you know, the environment and the reason those those restrictions were put in place to begin with. However, I also think that if somebody looks at, you know, the existing plan and they purchase property or, or base a, their decisions around what is supposed to happen, that they should expect that that's what's going to happen. And so we're in a really tough spot because the town issued a building permit in error, and I think he went forward. But I guess I would just ask that if you purchased it so recently. You weren't aware of, of covenants and restrictions and a building envelope on the property? Because normally that would be part of the... Yeah, so I, I, I was not aware of it. I should have been aware of it. I gave it to my architect and my architect... Dismissed it? Yeah, I'm not putting you on the... No, no, I understand. Believe me, I'm, I'm not happy with the situation either. I'm sure you're not. No, it's not good for anybody. Um, you know, I, at, at the end of the day, I, I, would have, I would not have been in favor of a public hearing for this application. At this point, I think that I am. There's... There's clear opposition, and I think that the, the neighbor has a really good point. Um, I wish that I could say yes or no. It should go to the back or it can stay where it is. Um, I would lean at this point towards leaving it where it is because the, the implications of clearing more trees and regrading are, um, are terrible, frankly. I don't think that that's going to be a good answer. But I'm very sympathetic to a neighbor who seems to have actually done his research and said this property can have a house. You know, it can have a house, but it's going to be in the back in a place that he was comfortable with. So I, I think that he uh, has, has a really, really good point. And I would like the opportunity to ha have a go to public hearing uh, to hear from him, which I'm sure is not something that you want to hear. Um, you know, I wish that the town wouldn't miss this and I wish that we, it, it, we wouldn't be in this situation, but <coughs> we are. So um, that's what I think. I'm gonna be curious as to what the rest of the board says, but I would be in favor of a public hearing. I, I do think with, with respect to the change of circumstance issue, there is clearly a change of circumstance that the town issued a building permanent error. It has been regraded, uh, it's been excavated, and I think that, that is a change of circumstance. However, just because I find a change of circumstance doesn't mean that we have to grant the modification. We still have to make the decision as to whether it's right. So, um, you know, I'm sorry for the situation all around, but, but I wanted to go to public hearing to hear from, from everybody involved. Yeah, just again, um, if I can just remind you that, that we did offer to move the house after the initial stop order. Yep. There was about a two and a half month process where we resurveyed the property. I believe that the initial recommendation was to move the house, which we agreed to, and then it was determined that it would cause um, 
significant clearing of additional of additional trees. Yeah, no, on behalf of the town, on behalf of this board, I, I apologize for. I mean, no, no, I mean, we, we, uh, I'm, at know, I'm at fault as well, so. We, I have, we, we approved the modification because it made sense. Frankly, at the time, I, I didn't realize that there was such vocal opposition. Um, I certainly didn't realize that there was a covenant in place that, you know, with respect to the, the grade, the slopes, uh, the slopes um, I, I guess I wonder at this point whether those slopes still exist because it's been done. Um, but anyway, I, I wish that we hadn't proceeded the way that we have, and, and I apologize for that, but I, I think that at this point, I would support a public hearing. You guys can have a seat if you want. Thank you. We'll, we'll ask you up if you have more questions. Ed? Uh, I have a question first, which I guess Eric can answer. Is, uh, is five slash seven old Pine Drive across the street? Um, the seven is located here. Okay, that's interesting. I actually, I went up there to have a look at this today, um, and uh, I actually was sort of assuming that the neighbor who wrote the letter was the, was the neighbor, yeah, exactly. Uh, I would sort of understand that his position actually a little bit better, to be honest, because there's another house going up to the east of, the, of that house as well. Um, like Ian said, this is a really difficult situation and I wish we weren't in it. Uh, we know we've, we've got to make this right. The, you know, the undisturbed area to the back of the lot is beautiful. You know, I walked through it today, I took some pictures, it's you know, undisturbed, there's a bushy understory. It, I believe that it, it uh, adjoins the Wilson Preserve right behind it, which is like 40 acres of pine forest and it would be you know, just objectively speaking, it would be a terrible thing to have to clear more at this stage. But, you know, we, we clearly have an issue with the covenant restriction that we need to deal with. And there is some, some opposition. I don't know if it's only Mr. Paul or there are other neighbors who have a, a similar feeling. I haven't heard anything. There's nothing in the file and nobody's contacted me in, as far as another neighbor. Right. But they might not know. I mean, I yeah, exactly. Saying, they, they wouldn't yeah. have been noticed anyway. Well, I guess that they drive by they would know. Yeah, well, they certainly would know. I mean, it's yeah. pretty obvious, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, in terms of the of the slope, by the way, I mean, e even though excavation has happened, it's, you know, it's clearly 15 feet higher on the west than it is on the east, you know, so to that to that extent, the slope is there, right? The, the change in grade is still there. Um, but I, I'm not sure how relevant in the end that, that is in my estimation of this. I, uh, I think, you know, where I'm kind of leaning on this, and I, Public hearing might not be a bad idea, but I think that I am very much leaning toward leaving this as it is, perhaps moving the house back as far as it can go toward the clearing line. Sure. When this was approved by us, I guess April, last April? Just, 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 just recently. recently. The move was approved. There was no hearing? No. No. Okay. No well, the covenant, the covenant restriction issue wasn't really on our radar at that that's point. Right, so that we approved it, but there hadn't been a public hearing. So no, that's right. Was no. Okay, that was just my question. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is the last. Um, that's right. it. Kathy? Um, <clears throat> well, I'm, I share almost identically Ian's feelings on this. I'm sorry it happened. Um, and as grateful as I am to the applicants for you know, offering to be flexible, it's also partly your fault that it happened. You know, due diligence is important, and the fellow across the street has done his due diligence, so he knew, you know, that there were slopes. And, you know, I get it. I rely on professionals to give me advice, too. But in, in the end, it falls to you as the homeowner to make sure you've done your due diligence. So, and, and we didn't know it either in the covenants and restrictions that there was a second, uh, you know, issue with the with the slopes. I don't think taking more trees down is going to help this situation. But I would like to see a survey that has an updated clearing line on it. You know, this is part of the problems we've had. I think even with the building department, is the survey was not well. Did the uh, building envelope wasn't well articulated on the survey to begin with. So, if we knew where the clearing lines were, perhaps some of Dr. Paul's suggestions might be better put to use because if there's a way to push the house back a little bit without having to um, completely, uh, you know, excavate many more trees. I, I, mean, I will say it, it does look like they put up the project limiting fencing mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was required by the building department. I think it's shown in my, um, it's 
sure. and that's been that's consistent with what's down. Yeah. I mean, this you would understand my um, hesitation. <laughs> Sure. That 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 you know that that this Come up be an accurate that that's an accurate uh, assessment of it. The survey does have all the clearing lines on it. Right, but it's the existing. But, but we don't know if that's existing or it was. No, that's exist. That's, exi that's We've cleared up. We've cleared up to the permitted portion. clearing lines. They're saying that they they didn't go past where the project limiting fencing was. It, that's probably correct. You put the fencing in before yeah, you did any, any clearing. Okay. And looking at the picture, we, again, we, did, we did initial. We did, John. We did it. We did initial clearing. Then the then building department asked you to add, add the silk, the uh, fencing. The first time that the that the permit was issued and we started clearing, I only cleared where the house was from here to here, because the problem was the original house had the driveway and garage on this side. And with the elevation change, I proposed to flip the house the opposite way. And then I went back to the town and it got amended, which now when we cleared, we got the stop work order and they wanted us to move the house back. And then three months later, they, you approved every, everything going back to where it is now. And this is the latest survey showing um, the 15% slope and uh, and the existing clearing. So the project limiting, limiting fence is the is you have cleared to the project Correct. limiting fence. That is all Correct. empty. Correct. And that's okay. shown, and that's shown on the survey. And that's as it is right now. Like Correct. Today. Okay. Yes. That wasn't clear to me looking at it. Um, so the so the clearing line is it comes across here, turns across here. Yeah. yeah. Comes up here. So in the front, yeah. where is the clearing? What has been un what's not cleared in the front? There's sh the shrubs here, the existing shrubs, okay, all remaining. So the only I have trees as well. Yes, yes, correct. So the uh, and I, and I, I, again, I, I haven't read his letter. I don't have my reading glasses. But I, the homeowner is over here, right? And I guess his concern is that the driveway is here, which the driveway would be here regardless of whether right. we were up here or not. This is all the original shrubs. Um, so, I, I yeah. My understanding from reading here. his letter is that he's more concerned about seeing your house, not so much the driveway. So, because the building envelope, as you look at this, it, it was supposed to be well back in the property, and the assumption would be that there would be screening natural vegetation, before, you know, in front of that. So, which, I think which there it's, still is. All this natural vegetation is fair point. Right. I just don't know if it's enough to screen the house. I think so that's his concern. Won't. It, it is, yes. The of the so, um, just to finish my comments, and then, you know, we can yeah. go on. Uh, I think we need to have a public hearing on this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry that no good deed goes unpunished here, but I don't, I don't see any way around it. Okay, Patty. Um, let's see. Um, obviously, you know, we approved something. Um, I don't, I don't want to see more trees taken down. So I'm comfortable where it is, but I'd like to see what we could do to possibly mitigate the concerns of, of the neighbor. So I would agree for a, a public hearing, but I'm more willing to, to lean to leaving everything where it is. We have a lot of oh. Sorry, Randy. Randy, it's your turn anyway. Okay, so, yeah, so the, the topography, the neighbor's house is lower, which is, which is mm -hmm. good in terms of screening. And the, the reserved area, it says reserved area A on the survey, is that the white white pine knolls had a reserved area that? Yes, in fact, I can show you that as well. Do that quite a bit, but um, these are all the lots of the subdivision, and this is the reserved area. This large is behind the, the farthest rear lot, but there's a strip on the, along the back here, and then all of this is the reserved Okay. Also the front. Do you know where the Palmenock path is, Eric, on that? Um, I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure if it goes through this, this strip here. I don't think that it does because I don't see it connecting to anything here. What, what, I'm sorry, Eric, what was the question? The, the Palmenock, Palmenock path, path. The, trail. the trail. I don't think it's in that area. No. There is a trail, but I don't think it's the Palmenock so I walk the house. <laughs> the trail is off over here. The trail is off over here. Comes back in over here. So that's the northwest path? Yeah. Okay. It's, so it's 
it's down through the preserve and then back over here. So this is, um, I think it's Bullpath Bull Road? Bullpath Road. Bull 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 Road is back over here. And then the no, it's Old Northwest. It's old North That's Northwest. Old Northwest. Old Northwest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Let's put one last thing. Oh, yeah. There is, in the cul-de-sac, across from his home, it, there is a there's a wooded area in the middle of the cul-de-sac, which which limits his views of my home as well. Okay. Okay. It's a heavily wooded. So where I, where I end up on the uh, the, the mishmash here is leave the excavation where it is, leave the clearing where it is, put some additional screening in the 60 feet in the front yard as a condition of mm -hmm. our modification. The only other thing I could think of is to, is to redo the site plan of the lot, move the pool, and then move the pool to one side, move the house back where mm -hmm. the pool is. But I, I, that would be my plan B. I think plan A for me is leave it alone, put some screening in the front yard, and that's it. End of story. Okay, Nancy. I'm with Randy. I think okay. that, and and Patty. I, I think, um, you know, I'm sorry that it, it happened. However, we did approve the location without without knowing, and you know, we just we have to move forward, not backward. So, um, I agree with these guys. Okay, I think I'm in agreement too. The um, our responsibility to some extent is is to the neighbors, though. Um, who bought in here and to the community with a certain expectation on, based on covenants and building building envelope in the back. Uh, it, I, so I feel, let's see how many people feel at this point we should hold a public hearing though to make sure everybody knows about this. Okay, it looks like a majority for, wanna have a public hearing. And so, but I think I'm in agreement also at this point, I don't think moving the house back and cutting more trees gains very much in terms of the view. It's gonna be the, basically the same effect from the street. And I think uh, adding landscaping uh, in the front to provide more screening would be a, a smart thing to do. Um, should we define that landscaping before the hearing? Should that be part of the hearing discussion? Um, we ask for a site, uh, well, I, it might be best to hear the, the public comments. First, and then, yeah, all right. I, would, okay. right. I, I would be in favor of doing the hearing as soon as possible. All right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because I know that yeah. is a little bit of a burden, and then I think that everybody has commented on possibly more screening coming out of that. So, so would you be in touch with Eric about the process, public hearing process? Because there's a notice requirement that has to be posted, and you have to notice the neighbors that the hearing's being held. How, how long period, how long it's a three-week notice period. And you're talking about noticing the hearing in two weeks. So unfortunately, you're going to lose five, five or six weeks. The question this has been going on since February. I don't know. Yeah. Who? So who? Well, I don't know what we can do about it at this point. And we apologize. I mean, I think that the, there's blame all around in this case. I think um, what we'd expedite it is a draft revegetation plan for the hearing, so you spell out what you're gonna put in the front yard. Mm. Well, it's not gonna change the, the legal notice period of time, though. No, Just no. So you know. but, I, but I mean, that way, that could possibly be resolved. Sure. Talk to Eric. Okay. Um, well, he's going to get noticed. No, I know. But well, he may get, may not actually get noticed. Who, who would be noticed in this? All, I think all the lots, across the street, all the lots in the subdivision should be noticed, John. Right? It's a covenant and restrictions change. Who would be noticed? Wouldn't it, would across the street be noticed? You don't, well, you you notice across the street just by standard notice process and adjoining and, uh, adjoining yeah. neighbors on all sides. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think. I would just use the standard. That'd be sufficient. Uh, okay. And who owns the reserved area? Oh, the town. So it's really we don't need a notice. <laughs> I don't know. It's only going to be two or three. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be posted though. Three or four people. It, okay. Which are in 
Um, let's go to Elmwood. We'll try to get. Okay, public hearing was held on June 6. No members of the public spoke at the hearing and no uh, written comments have been received. Um, the town engineer hasn't found the engineering elements satisfactory by a memo, but I actually spoke to him before this meeting and he's okay with it. Um, Office of Fire Prevention has signed off on it. So if you agree it's ready for approval, conditions would be the A or B. I did prepare a resolution tonight that also had a condition that the town engineer sign off on it. I, you know, he's gonna write a memo shortly, but I don't see why you can't approve it tonight with that condition, which will shortly be fulfilled. Okay. Give you a sec, Nancy, if you want. Thank you so much. Hey. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this is basically a wrap up. And I, and I think it's ready for approval. Okay. Does the board agree? Yes. Ready for approval? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see if we can um, have a similar discussion on Four Oaks before we have our hearings. We got Eric it. on that. Yeah. I am way behind Noel's. I think I misspoke. It's not really a re edge thing. Landscape, yeah, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. You would ask for white pines in both cases. Okay. Okay. Hey, on Four Oaks, there was a public hearing on June 6. No members of the public spoke at the hearing, and no correspondence has been submitted to the file. Um, the town engineer has found the engineering elements satisfactory. Uh, the fire marshal has determined no fire protection is required, and um, it's ready. They actually already received health department, so that won't be a condition of approval. It's a type two action. No secret um, isn't required on the project, so um, it's ready to be approved, conditioned on the plans listed and final approval from the architectural review board and registration of the affordable apartment with the town's office of housing and community development. Okay, Nancy. Thanks, Joanne. Uh, I think it's ready for approval. Nothing to add. Okay, the board agrees? Yeah, yes. I agree. Okay. Yes. Um, why don't you, we still got a few minutes. Here's the Elmwood site plan approval. Do you yeah, want to read, read that? that? In the matter of the application of Elmwood Apartment Site Plan Special Permit for um, approval, I have read the resolution and move for its adoption. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed and carried. All right. We've got a couple minutes. I, what do we? What do we? Can we do the playhouse? What discussion? No, we're like three minutes away from hearing time. Oh. No. 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 I, what's that? Yeah, right All right, okay, let's do the play. Okay, they submitted the same plans as being reviewed by the health department. Uh, the health department chlorine requirements uh, for a public pool are similar to that recommended for private pools. Uh, the applicants proposed a 12 foot deep dry well and its location is roughly a thousand feet from Tuthill Pond. Um, they have also agreed that water will not be emptied until zero milligrams per liter of chlorine remains. Um, so we find that acceptable. You should determine if you agree. Uh, we amended the EAF accordingly and we find it consistent with the LWRP. So if the board agrees, it'll be ready for public hearing once the zoning board grants the relief. And I'll show you on the plan where the drywall is. It doesn't seem like there's any danger from an ultra chlorinated, you know, um, requirement here. And basically, um, they'll filter the the pool of um, the pool water until there's zero chlorine. Um, they said they put up a sign in the control room to make sure that that happens um, before they discharge it into the dry well. Um, these are sandy soils in the area. It really, I don't uh, foresee any danger to groundwater. We mainly require um, chlorine um, with harbor protection overlay district so that somebody doesn't pump their pool over land into a wetland where the chlorine remains. Um, I don't see any um, potential for uh, contamination or, or danger to Tuthill Pond from this, but the board should determine if it agrees. Okay, so what we actually did was we tabled a motion mm -hmm. for a negative declaration. Um, so does anybody want to comment on this pool information that we've subsequently received? Just that we'll make it a condition of the approval that yep. they 
zero oh, right, zero grams per liter. Yeah, I so we have a it's great. We're making a let, neg to let's reopen that discussion. So we had an, uh, we had a motion and a second. So all in favor okay. of a neg deck? Aye. 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 All right, passed and carried. We and then on the coastal assessment, coastal so assessment we form, we need a motion from I would, I would make a motion to approve it. Second. So second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed Aye. and carried. Okay. So that's all we need to do for the playhouse Next for tonight. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Good work. And our first hearing, Nancy, gone fishing, outdoor dining. Okay, hear ye, hear ye. You can Take notice. <laughs> oh, should we wait? No, no, yeah, but you can just I hit can the take, high points. Uh, uh, take a notice that a public hearing will be held before the East Hampton Town Planning Board, mm -hmm. 150 Fathline Pantagal Road, East mm -hmm. Hampton, on Wednesday, June 13th at 7 p.m. or as soon thereafter. As this matter may be heard, <laughs> to consider the application of gone fishing outdoor dining shed. I'll wait till everyone's quiet. Would everyone, uh, Marguerite, would you? Thank you. I'm, re I'm just reading. No, I was asking everybody to be quiet. Thank you. This is. I, I understand. This I know. is the gone fish out gone fishing outdoor dining shed site plan approval pursuant to article 6 of chapter 255 of east hampton town code for the addition of 34 outdoor dining seats at the gone fishing marina also proposed is a conversion of a second story apartment to a storage space associated with a first floor retail use and redesign of a parking lot the multiple business complex includes two retail stores a restaurant limited to 16 seats a second story apartment the 3800 square foot boat storage and repair building and a 177 slip marina with 164 parking spaces. Subsequent modifications revised the roof line of the boat storage building along with minor revisions to accessory structures and sheds, walk-in freezers and walkways and reduction of the number of parking spaces from 168 to 156 based on a reduction in the number of boat slips. The property contains 108,172 square feet and is located on the south side of Eastlake Drive, Montauk, situated in a waterfront harbor protection overlay district zoning. Zoning district uh, on the map of East Hampton, Suffolk County map number 300-6-2-15.1 and 27.1. Subject application classified as an unlisted action pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act Part 617 of the New York Code of Rules and Regulations and Chapter 128 of the Town Code. A survey prepared by James Walsh, dated revised January 17, 2018. A set of plans prepared by John Jarliski, engineer, dated January 11, 2018, including first level plans, second level parking layout, prepared by TF Engineering. Uh, dated, revised September 24th, 2017. Uh, sanitary plans and details, uh, prepared by S.L. Marseca and Associates, dated January 24th, 2007. A revege plan prepared by Jim Grimes, design uh, from April 13th, 2018, and lighting layout version plan by Dimin Sales, including five sheets dated April 9th, 2018. These are all available for inspection at the Planning Board Office, Suite 103, 300, Pantago Place, East Hampton, New York, dated May 23rd, 2018. Joe Potter, Chairman. Thank you. Joanne? Uh, uh, just side. before you go on, I just want to... Oh, keep I forgetting the notice and posting. I have the uh, paper good? service okay. posting and it's in order. Excellent. Okay, the, the site has a prior approval for a snack bar slash restaurant with 16 seats and four bar seats, interior, all interior. The proposal is to create an outdoor dining area with 34 additional seats. Um, also, a second floor apartment um, will be um, converted to storage space uh, to allow to reduce the sanitary flow um, in order to meet the Suffolk County Department of Health Services regulations. Um, the applicant has also um, agreed to upgrade the sanitary system to a no low nitrogen one and actually submitted plans depicting that this week. Um, even though they have health, the health department approval is not technically, um, may not be required. Um, the, 
there's a plan to revegetate 9,900 square feet in front of the boat uh, repair shop, which was previously required by another site plan. So they, that will, but it has since converted to boat storage that will be done. And there's, um, the parking will be slightly um, reconfigured and 158 parking spaces provided. And they are updating the lighting to comply with the town code. Thank you, Joanne. Is there someone from the applicant who wishes to speak at the hearing? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Richard A. Hammer from Viano and Hammer, representing uh, uh, the applicant, Gordon Fishing Marina, and, and Tom and Maureen Senefelder. Uh, I don't really have much to add. I did want to uh, implore on the board, we had discussed previously the IOWTS uh, <coughs> sanitary system, is it I, Innovative Alternative Alternative Sanitary System. Uh, we had discussed perhaps allowing this applicant to bond for those improvements so that we could receive a certificate of occupancy and install that after the season. As it stands <coughs> now, we do have health department approval that covers all the existing seating on the property. The capacity of the system is there. Uh, so we're, we're voluntarily agreeing to upgrade that. My other understanding is that these commercial units, they're expecting to get a larger size approved uh, that will handle more flow, that would limit the amount of units that you have to install. And the other reason is because the, the, uh, these units are not readily commercially available. My understanding is it takes three to four months to acquire uh, one of these things that are manufactured. So, uh, you know, what I'd request is that if there was a way we could get issued a certificate of occupancy subject to posting the bond for the sanitary, uh, that would expire, uh, I don't know, in a, a year, or uh, basically a year, I guess, would be perfect, or even before next season. That would allow us time to install the sanitary system when we get the components. The health department approves a commercial uh, larger unit, which I was told is gonna be done in July. Uh, and it would be up and running for next year. Some of the smaller things we're gonna be able to do right now, the lights, the, the reveg, the uh, drainage, all that stuff will be completed. It's just the sanitary system's a, a little bit longer lead time for us to do, and we'd lo really love to be able to get a certificate of occupancy while we're working that through. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, would anyone from the public like to be heard on the gone fishing dining area? Nobody? I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Asked and carried. Uh, Gray Trex Minor Subdivision Public Hearing. Take note of this. The public hearing will be held before the East Hampton Town Planning Board at Town Hall, 159 Pentagon Road, East Hampton, on Wednesday, June 13th, 2018, at 7 p.m., or soon thereafter, as matter may be heard. Consider the application of Gray Trex Minor Subdivision approval to divide uh, the parcel into two lots. Um, the property is located on the west side of Montauk Boulevard in East Hampton and is situated in the B residence water recharge overlay district. Um, as long as all the paperwork is in order, uh, let the public hearing be open. Okay. Uh, Eric? Okay, this is the property. The simple posting. Right. I'm no, sorry, I, this is a mental in the block about publication. this. <laughs> in order? <laughs> simple two lot subdivision meets zoning of the lot area. There's a hypothetical sanitary envelopes illustrated. The property's off Montauk Boulevard in Waynescott. Um, 114 is right down here. Um, so that it's basically a simple uh, sub waiver. It also requires an urban renewal uh, map modification from the town board. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone from the applicant who would like to be heard on this public hearing? Is there anyone from the general public who'd like to be heard? Motion uh, to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed and carried. The hearing is closed. Marguerite? Mar did she, did she want to speak about the playhouse? Did you want to speak about the playhouse? At the, the playhouse? Uh, I just wanted to say that I'm very pleased that they have moved the pool from the top floor to ground level You better, you should, you better come up. This is a little bit out of order, but I think I said you could speak. Thanks. Yeah. I know the town has committed $3 million to this project, and I know that there is a great deal of enthusiasm for a pool at the Playhouse. However, I have not heard the people who represent the Playhouse Committee assure the town that in return for the commitment that this very major renovation is going to be 
part of the town's movement toward energy self sufficiency and this is a great opportunity i believe for this pool to be heated by solar panels and for the playhouse committee to commit to a building that is going to be a LEEDS Platinum certification. I don't see any constraint to that given the site of the Playhouse and given that they are going to be partnering to a certain extent with the fire department okay. in terms of parking, emergency services, et cetera. So, just to so you will be holding a, a formal public hearing Yes. So please be sure to come to That's that. Time to that would be the, the best. challenge is the public hearings are not always announced in the kind of fashion that right. enables a lot of us from Montauk to plan to be in attendance. But yes, I just wanted to get that little pitch in. All right, thank you. Did you say your it's name? It's a good, it's a good yeah. Sorry, Janet Van Sickle. 713 Old Montauk Highway. The public hearing will be announced in the paper, and if you look at our agenda online on the town website, there's a section for agenda minutes. I It'll always be on there. I know, but it's frequently only a week or so in advance, yep. and that is a challenge yep. for. Yes. And there'll be a yep. sign post. You can also submit letters to yes. the file now or any time right. to the close of the public hearing, and that goes into the record just like the comments that are made in person. Okay, Wayne Scott, Commercial Center. Okay, application has been made to subdivide a roughly 70 acre parcel into 50 lots, uh, with most lots roughly one acre in size, uh, with one 4.5 acre lot to contain a ready mix concrete plant, one six and a half acre lot to contain a masonry supply yard. Uh, the lot is 100% cleared and has been used for various industrial activities. It is mostly a reclaimed uh, sand pit. Uh, it's zoned CI and situated in Wayne Scott, and there is a moratorium in effect on this area. Uh, this is an unlisted action. We recommend that you declare lead agency status. Uh, the subdivision has been laid out generally in a grid pattern with mostly uh, one acre lots. No comprehensive subdivision improvements other than roadways have been shown. Uh, the subdivision chapter states that at the time of initial application, all project improvements to the site shall be disclosed and considered so that an integrated plan of future improvements is developed. Uh, the applicants have not provided information regarding the development of the future lots. Additionally, numerous basic subdivision elements have been omitted, uh, including clearing uh, of streets, uh, paving of streets, fire protection, adequate drainage facilities, landscaping of recharge basins, street signs, and street trees. Additionally, consideration should be given to a community wastewater plant as well as a uh, supply of public water. Uh, overall, the proposed subdivision layout differs greatly from the conceptual sketches recommended in the Hamlet study. Uh, the Hamlet study states that under current CI zoning, the pit could be subdivided into dozens of separate lots and turned into an industrial park, and that each site would be uh, independently designed. Unfortunately, the, re the result of this process would be a plan that sprawls across the site at relatively low density, with each building surrounded by a parking lot and a patch of open space that no one uses. Uh, the town code allows for phasing of subdivision approvals. Given the recommendations of the Hamlet study, it may be prudent for the board and the applicants to discuss phasing the project in order to develop the property in stages rather than um, a grid of entirely commercial industrial lots in one process. Uh, this is mostly gravel pit soils and sands. Uh, there was a vehicle waste oil spill that was treated by the DEC in 1991. The uh, site has a shallow depth of groundwater of seven to 10 feet. It's also roughly 500 feet from the Georgia, uh, from Georgia Capon in a paired water body. It's also in an area of Wayne Scott where water wells have tested positive for contaminants. It has also had industrial uses on site for many decades. Based on this, we recommend that you re require extensive soil and groundwater testing. Uh, we also recommend that a full traffic study be required. Uh, the impacts of traffic could be quite significant. Uh, as a hypothetical example, a warehouse building of a quarter of the maximum allowable coverage on each lot would create nearly 1,200 uh, vehicular trips per weekday. Uh, a future train station was called to be um, considered. Uh, that's not part of the plan. Uh, there's a 20 foot um, bike path that was required by the community preservation project plan. That's not illustrated. Uh, the access point at Montauk Highway is uh, currently poorly defined and un unsignaled. Uh, this location was shown in the Hamlet study as one for a possible um, traffic circle.
circles or something, but basically right now, this intersection um, isn't going to handle the, uh, the volume of traffic. You can see those things. It handles the volume of traffic that uh, could be generated by this subdivision. Um, we don't have comments from the town engineer or office of fire prevention. In conclusion, the application is incomplete, but the property is perhaps the most important in Wayne Scott with uh, respect to the impacts of future development uh, that future development can and will have on the hamlet. Uh, we recommend that the planning board first declare lead agency status and that the board subsequently make a positive declaration pursuant to Seeker in chapter 128 of the town code. A full EAF part two and three will be prepared and at that time the board can begin the scoping process. Okay, thank you, Eric. Uh, would anyone like to be heard from the applicant? Uh, yes, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, David Egan, appearing in my capacity as Senior Vice President Development of the Wayne Scott Commercial Center, LLC. I also have with me this evening Chick Voorhees, the managing partner of Nelson Pope and Voorhees, our principal consultant. He's available uh, for any additional information or questions that you may have. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a lot. Um, I appreciate the memo and the work that went into it. Um, I just want to, one thing I want to talk about is the rationale for this application from the applicant's standpoint. Um, the applicants owned this site for 34 years. Um, it was purchased from the DeGate family in 1984. Um, it's pretty much at that point. At that point, both the um, the commercial operations that are present there today, uh, the masonry supply yard, and block plant, and the uh, it's not a cement plant, and that's an important distinction. It's a ready mix plant. Uh, were in operation at that time and actually predate zoning. Um, as the owner of this lot for 34 years, the applicant um, has learned from history that there's very little demand. Um, to date, and we think even less in the future for large CI lots in this town. Um, it just, the, the, uh, the economic activity out here is just not producing that type of demand. So we understand that. Um, the present configuration of this property, which is six pre existing lots that pre exist zoning, um, range from four and a half acres to 37 and a half. Um, they don't really conf uh, lend themselves to anything useful. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why um, they, they're in the same configuration as they were um, in Europe since the early 50s when we first uh, traced uh, the uh, deed history. Now, um, in putting this project together, um, we spent a lot of time, a lot of thought, and one thing we did was um, we undertook a study of all the CA, CI property in the town of East Hampton. Um, and we have a copy of it that we put into the um, um, file, and I think you would find it interesting to read. And it's a lot of uh, detail, lot by lot, literally lot by lot, whether it's improved, where it exists, what its size is. Um, and what we've determined, this is as of last September, because we did this in also in connection with the Hamlet study and presented it to the town board and to the consultants in that program, and we'll talk about the Hamlet study in a second. Um, it's taught us some very important things. It's taught us that um, there was only a handful of CI lots left in the town that aren't being utilized. As of September, there was 24. 12 of those are owned by the town around the airport. Six of them are the property that we have here that we're beginning this process with. And the other six range from one acre down to less than a half acre scattered throughout the other CI um, um, zones in town. So it, what, 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 what was created, which is a very small percentage of lots anyhow, are pretty much utilized. And the other thing we've learned is that there's clearly a shortage of small CI lots. Um, what, what's left is too big to really be useful in any sort of meaningful way. Um, and why is that important? Because I, I think what we've also learned from one, uh, the towns economic study that was done in connection with the Hamlet studies was very, very um, informative. And what it, I think it confirmed is what we probably all knew and felt is that th this is a second homeowner driven economy and where the principal activity is related to the construction, the, uh, the remodeling, maintenance and you know, care of 
ever larger and more second homes. So that's where the economic driver in this community is, and we think that's where the demand is. So that is sort of the rationale, well, you know, why do we take what we have and start this grid? That's part of it, okay? Now, it's important for everyone to realize that even when we get to the end of this process, there's still a whole other series of processes that has to go through before any of these lots get used. There's no lot on here that would be used, new lot created, that wouldn't have to come in for you for site plan approval or an appropriate special permit. So the details of the ultimate use, they're not identified today. We don't have, I can tell you, I can represent to you, to my knowledge, we have no one lined up. We don't have a roster of people waiting. We just have a feel for the demand that we think over time. But we honestly believe, being the owner of this property for almost 35 years now, is that we're talking about a build out, if it happens at all, many, many years and probably decades. So this is the first basic step that would be a multiple step decade process. So I don't think anyone should feel threatened that tomorrow that the 71 inch, you know, in two years, whatever this process takes the next step, that this property is gonna be filled and up and running. That's just, the market tells us that's not the case. So um, I thought that was important to be, so you understand what, what our thought process is. And I just wanna talk to you about a few things in the memo, um, some clarifications. Um, and the first one is the Hamlet study. Um, we strongly believe that this application is entirely consistent with the Hamlet study. The Hamlet study, first of all, and we spent a lot of time analyzing, we have fully participated in that process. We have extensive um, initial um, comment letter. We have a second comment letter to revise draft. They're in your file. I urge you to read them. Um, they contain a lot of discussion. We've tried to be, by design, completely transparent uh, um, as to what we want to do, how we want to achieve it, and how we want to work with the town, and how we think this is, in fact, consistent with the Hamlet study. Um, the property itself, just so, you know, when you look at the Hamlet study, the Hamlet study does not really, it, it, it's really designed to talk about the core commercial district, of which, by definition, doesn't include our property at this point. Now, there is some recommendations for a conceptual plan that the front part of the property could be incorporated for future use um, and expansion of that district, um, but that's a long-term process and there's nothing that we're doing here that's counter to that. And probably more importantly, the, the concept framework that's contained in the study for the plan is an aspirational concept. It's not a plan that, um, that, that, that is gonna be enacted or put into effect, it's a goal. It's how the, a good balance of this property going forward may be. We don't disagree with any of that. Um, but what the plan does recognize for the bulk of this property, in our quote, because I think it's important, it says that the accommodation of ongoing and future commercial industrial uses at the site makes good planning sense. So there's a recognition in that study that this property as it's been zoned since conception, um, is needed, useful, and will be used for this ultimately. So um, in that sense, it's clearly um, consistent with the Hamill study. But also importantly, to the extent the town board, this is really a town board issue, wants to take steps to effectuate all the part of the conceptual plan that was shown here, that shows more open space that, that's, that, that our plan shows for. Our plan shows the required 10% reserve run up against the um, residential district. We thought that was the best use of it to protect its neighbors. Uh, to the extent that they want to participate in that program, they can. Um, because there's only way, that the only path there is to that conceptual plan is through purchases uh, of, of parts of this property, which we have indicated to the town board in writing and made as clear as we can that we're willing to participate in any discussions that they wanna have. Um, we're not adverse to them whatsoever. So for example, uh, there's, a, there's talk about the need for a uh, potential new parking, municipal parking area in the southwest part of the, 
of, of like Deutsche Bazaar. We have no issue with that. If the town wants to purchase as many as lots as they think is necessary to perpetuate that, that should be discussed. Um, the same goes for the, um, it's popped up in a number of different plans, the train station. Um, we don't know of any demand for a train station. We don't know if MTA has never come to the applicant and said we want to put one in. If the town really believes that that's something they want to reserve for, there's going to be lots in that corner that they can, they can preserve for that purpose. We have no issue with that so, uh, whatsoever. And the same goes for the open space. The extent that there's a need for open space here, and there's been discussion of a pretty significant large park, the only way you get a park is the municipality is to buy it. So we're not adverse to that either. So there's nothing here that's inconsistent with anything that's being discussed. In fact, it's our view that this sets the table for that to happen. Because right now, it would be very cumbersome and difficult for the town to, to, to seek any public purpose in this property in this present configuration. It, it, it's just not gonna happen. You still have to come and subdivide to create that. So we'll, 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 part of what we're trying to do is create the table for an orderly long-term development for commercial use, at the same time present the town with the opportunity to participate whatever level they feel like. And that we think is a positive. So that, if there's any message I leave you, with you tonight, please, that is the message. Now, there's another couple of minor points and then I'll be done. I won't go on forever, I promise. Um, just technically, the, the memo, um, the most recent prior application for this property is not the 96 application. It's actually in 2000, 2001, there was a subdivision application for 20 lots from, from 80,000 square feet to 240,000 square feet that actually was, um, what was POSDAC uh, was scoped and there was a preparation of a first draft for DIS that was submitted, which I have here, reviewed by the planning department. A second draft was almost submitted, but the application got um, sidelined in connection with the town-wide moratoriums that were in effect for a period of time prior to the 205 comprehensive plan. So um, that's really the last attempt um, at this. And it was similar to this, but it was larger lots and the reason why we have smaller lots, I think I've already explained to you. Uh, we don't think there's a business demand for those size lots anymore. And I think we're probably glad that we didn't create those because we probably would have been back trying to make them smaller. So that, that's just uh, correcting the record. Um, the subdivision improvements, the application has submitted reflects all the proposed subdivision improvements that we anticipate at this time. Obviously, we have some roads which will be built out to town standards. The drainage for those roads, we, we've submitted the, the calculations and the devices for those is already in the application. And we, we anticipate public water and we anticipate uh, gas mains. Um, we don't anticipate any recharge basins at this point because at this venture uh, uh, design theory is going to be that each individual lot will be able to handle that, um, the runoff properly by the use of rain gardens and whatever the, we need to do to make that happen. So I think that um, there is no other comprehensive um, um, improvements at this time, including a community wastewater treatment plant, which I wanna to talk to you a little bit about. Um, we're not against that. Um, we're not for it, we think it's too early. Um, we don't have um, any idea about what the actual use and demand is gonna be. So um, our, our experts tell us it's too early to think about a community waste treatment program because we don't know how to design it, we don't, we don't know what the capacity is. So if something comes down the pike where someone would come in it, where that would be necessary or helpful, that'll be in front of you um, in some site plan or special permit application, so it can be handled at that time. And the one thing we wanted people to know, and maybe it's just because I finally figured this out, so I think, I guess it's recent, law of recency is working in my head. I think it's important that the flip side of the community wastewater treatment plan is there could be a significant increase in density because of it. And I think we should understand that. Today, zoning in a CI lot is, building coverage is 50%. So. 
in theory, um, for a 40,000 square foot lot, which most of these are, you could, under zoning, have a building 20,000 square feet. But the reality is, based on individual septic systems, even advanced nitrogen reduction systems, which uh, would be required here under code, um, that's, that 50% building coverage is reduced down to 17.22%. So what that means is the largest building you could have on any one of these lots is 6,887 square feet. And that's with the most generous flow rate offered under Article 6, would be for warehousing type um, structures, which um, we've been advised would include the, the classic service commercial operation. You know, think of a plumber who has two or three trucks, a warehouse, a little bit of a workshop and an office, that type of thing. And so, um, so what that would mean is in theory, if you introduce a community wastewater treatment, in theory, you could design something that would bring you back up to the 50% coverage. And that's a significant impact that um, people need to think about, and we think about it. And if you extrapolate that out to the whole property, it's, it's too much development. I don't think there's a market for it, and we're not interested in having that much, because what would happen is that, in, that if you took today at the 17.22%, which is the governing standard effectively at the most, if you did it over the whole 71 acres, which we're not going to do, but in theory, you'd end up with about 500,000 square feet of buildings. Well, if you did it in theory under a um, community waste treatment plant, that number jumps 291% to a million four, one million four hundred fifty-five thousand approximately. There's no, we're not interested in that, and I don't think the community is interested in that. And I don't think the market would ever demand that. So, we just think that's important for you to under, we understand it now. So we want people to understand that um, when it comes to the groundwater situation, we're fully aware of it. We understand the issues. Um, we think they can be addressed. We've been told by advisors they can be addressed with these advanced nitrogen systems. Um, so that's probably the way we'll go unless something extraordinary comes. With respect to phasing, um, we're really, you know, politely, uh, we're not really interested in doing a phased um, site plan approval. Um, this is, as you can well know, it's gonna be an arduous process with a lot of resources and time put into it and we, we see it happening once, not multiple times. Um, some of the minor matters, the bike path, we have no issue with that. We'll incorporate that into the plan. Um, the train station we spoke about, again, if there's a need or demand for that, that's we view that as a discussion with the town board or the MTA, if they wanna come in and, and, and secure rights over a portion of that property, we'll be glad to work with them in any reasonable way. Um, and the last point is Hedges Lane. There's a note in here about um, one of the accesses we're, we're proposing to be looked at in the DEIS is access from the northeast corner onto Daniels Hall Road. Um, there's a note about a need for abandonment. I don't think that's the case unless things have changed. Let us know about the plan, actually. No, I can tell you what that is. Okay. There, there's, um, it's a private road. Hedges Lane is a private road. My applic the applicants lived there, not now, but he did in the past. He's the one that actually paved it because he lived there. He owns a number of properties along Hedges Lane. Um, and his, his understanding is that since it doesn't get plowed, it's not in the system. So it's still a private road. And more importantly, in, I think in 2008 or maybe 2007, there was a um, lot line modification approved by this board that um, included this property over here, which is also home to the applicant, which in it provided for um, easement from this from the, this site, they own half the road, his other property owns the other half, through that property onto Daniels Hall Road. So that was already provided for by this board. Um, I think it's 2008. I have a file on, I just didn't have a chance to pull it out of the closet. Um, so that's just, another detail, um, we submitted a full environmental assessment form part one with the application. Um, we spent a lot of time, we think we've given you a complete picture of, of the setting. Um, and on that, we would just respectfully urge the board to in fact declare lead status this evening and authorize the planning department's full preparation of the EAF part one 
uh, part two and three, which um, we fully anticipate will lead to a POSDAC, which is what we anticipated all along. And we look forward to addressing your concerns and, and trying to mitigate these impacts to the extent we can. Okay. That's all I have for you. If there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer them for you. Well, why don't we go to the board and then sure. we'll bring you back up sure. if we need to. If not, if I don't come back up, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Randy, this is your area. Uh, <coughs> I would uh, move that we declare the agency. Second. All in favor? Aye. Passed and carried. And um, I agree both, both Eric and the applicant have recommended um, that we go ahead to a, um, we uh, provide other involved agencies uh, notice, and then we move to prepare parts two and three. And um, I'm in I'm in agreement with that. I think we we will get into the the specifics of the application through the CEPA process, mm -hmm. and that we we might as well get going. <laughs> okay, very good, uh, Ed. Uh, yeah. That, pretty much sums up my, my sense of it too. I think this is the beginning of a very long process and I think that uh, by going ahead with the EAF parts one and two is the way to do it. The, the details will emerge through that process. There's a lot to consider here for sure. Okay, Catherine. Um, yeah, I wanna thank <coughs> Mr. Egan for his comprehensive overview and um, I just, I, I, when we're uh, uh, asking the planning department to prepare the EIF parts two and three, does that assume we're making a positive declaration? Do, do we have to do that tonight? Okay. No, you can't until we the assessment. Okay, done. until I see. Okay, it's just the way it's worded and the question was confusing to me because it says here, have we instructed them to, anyway. Well, I think we, I think that we yeah, would leave fine. everyone with a sense of the feeling of what mm -hmm. the board is, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, this is, a, this is a big deal. It's the biggest project we're probably ever gonna come across, and it's a tremendous impact on the Hamlet of Wainscot. So, um, you know, scoping session and taking <coughs> into consideration all the various concerns that, have, that the applicant has, has listed, and there are others I'm sure that we'll learn about from the community as we go forward. Um, and, you know, we'll make the best of it. Thank you. Ian. Uh, I agree with the previous board members. Um, you know, it's a very important property. It's a big project. Um, I do agree with the applicant that, you know, the town, we need commercial industrial area that's usable uh, to have a, a thriving, living town. We can't import all those things from outside to serve second homes. I think we need to be a, a community that has all parts um, of what every successful community needs. So. Um, it's going to be a long process. I'm in full support of preparing EAF part two and three. I just see where that leads. It sounds like the applicant's anticipating a pause deck, which I think is clear that that's a likely scenario. Um, things that concern me, you know, right off the bat are certainly traffic in that area um, and, and soil testing. Otherwise, I think we'll, we'll have to give the layout some serious thought. And, and as everybody else has said, the details I think will emerge through the, uh, the CEQA process. And, um, I'm open-minded about the potential at this property, what, what could be done, but I think we have to be very careful to, uh, to thoroughly analyze it and make sure that, that we're treating this very significant project as such and, uh, and do what's right for the town. Okay, thank you. Patty. Um, I agree with everything everyone said already. Uh, I usually don't like to reiterate it all. Um, I thank you for you know expanding on the information that we currently have. It's a lot to digest, so I look forward to getting into the weeds. Nancy. Um, I agree too, we should take the first step and get the EAF done and then we'll talk. So I agree with the board that we'll prepare to move toward a pause deck. Um, and I, I think that this is a project that is a tremendous opportunity for the town to do more than CI and it's going to really be up to the town board to take the lead and engage with the applicant um, and we'll assist however we can. Okay? And pre All right. appreciate the applicant's flexibility and uh, willingness to you know, 
all to cooperate and work together. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Oceanside. Okay, um, the next. you requested a determination from the building inspector, which you've received. They basically said that they're grandfathered for the motel use, um, but must add for the parking requirement for the restaurant. That would actually be negative one spaces, although they're adding five grass spaces. Uh, it's still our understanding that they need to update, update the sanitary system for building three, but the board really should discuss that issue with council. Um, the application appears otherwise complete. However, the board is encouraged to reread these specific special permit standards and see if any additional information is needed at this time. Um, we've had discussions on numerous aspects of those special permit standards. And again, this is the first application of its kind under that new use definition. Um, but it doesn't appear that the sanitary system would be an issue to install it uh, on the site if they do need to upgrade the, the one for building three. They're upgrading ones for the first two buildings, but not they're not proposing to do it for the third at this time. Um, but it, the application is otherwise complete, but I think the board um, you know, uh, should discuss it and any questions you have for the applicant still at this time or for myself, um, I think should be discussed in this forum right now. Okay, thank you. Would the applicant like to come up Britton Vistrian here Britain. for the applicant Oceanside. We'd just like to express our sympathies to all of your family for the tragedy that happened. Thanks. I'm gonna try and hold it together. Um, I don't really know if there's a lot to go over in this memo. Um, I feel like the parking is resolved with Ann's memo and the big question is the sanitary. And for that answer, I, I think um, Drew Bennett's here as our sanitary engineer and I think he would probably best address that. If there's something else we want to get into discussion about, I think either Tiffany and I can respond, but it doesn't seem like I don't have a huge amount of presentation material. This is our, okay. you know, subsequent visit. You want to step aside? Oh, that's fine. Thank hand you. the hot potato to Drew. Because okay. he loves when I do that, says that. Uh, good evening, Drew Bennett, for the applicant. I was here last week, uh, and I didn't realize it had been adjourned until a um, week later. So um, I just want to make three points. Don't really, um, not really looking for a discussion or anything. I just would like the board members to think about the three points I'm going to make as far as the septic system is concerned. So um, we're considerably closer to a sewer system in Montauk than we were last time we got together. And uh, a sewage treatment system, a formal sewage treatment system, provides considerably better level of treatment than the on-site wastewater treatment systems. So, <clears throat> for example, you know, raw sewage is 60 to 80 of nitrogen. The target goal for the on-site wastewater treatment system is 19. If you believe the Newsday articles, the actual performance is somewhere in the mid 30s. <clears throat> An actual treatment system that's connected to a sewer district is less than 10. That's point number one. Point number two is uh, I've taken the opportunity. Uh, I'm not a lawyer and I don't play one on TV. Okay. Um, but you know, I read the I read the law about the requirement for OWTS, and nowhere did I see that it said you needed to upgrade the entire property for new construction. <coughs> so I would just ask the board to consider that. It's ambiguous at best, at least in my opinion. Uh, lastly, um, <coughs> there are cases what I have experienced down in the town where they have not required, they being the town building department, has not required the entire property to be upgraded. And I can provide you a list with those that I've, at least that I've experienced. So um, <coughs> I think the applicant has made good faith effort to upgrade two of the three buildings. The one, only one is actually being modified and they look forward to connecting the third to a sewage treatment system that's, uh, I would say, likely at this point in time. And I think the last point, that would be point number four, is, and I don't know this for a fact, but what I'm hearing is that even if they install these on-site wastewater treatment systems now, that when the sewage district, sewage district comes into play, they'll be required to connect. And I don't know that for a fact, but that's what I'm hearing. And if that's true, that would not be that rational to me. So 
Those are the only points I wanted to make, and um, thank you for the time. Okay. Thank you. I guess we'll go to the board at this point. Uh, Nancy? Well, I guess my question is, I mean, is it required? Is it, this is a total legal question. John, that might go to you. It either is or it isn't. I think, you know, it, it, if the, um, the question is, is it a... Um, see how the terminology in the code is I don't know, we can't really talk in circles. The only thing I can comment that I know, and I've discussed this with the health department, is that they are not requiring it. The Suffolk County Department of Health Services is not requiring it, and they totally understand my perspective about the right way to do this in okay. the future is to okay. connect to a sewage plant. Well, we're a long way off from that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I've lived in Montauk, and I know how things move. Uh, uh, I agree. It but would be I think great when lot, it happens. I, I think we're a lot closer than we were several months ago. So. Yeah, well, the the code requires the upgrade if, if there's a, a, a um, any activity or land use which increases occupancy limits of a building or increases site parking requirements. So the question is, does this increase site parking requirements? Uh, if it does, as we had said with the uh, Montauk Playhouse, the whole property is required to be in compliance, not just parts of it. So um, I'd have to but it, it doesn't but require. Well, that's that's park that's increase. the question. Does it increase the parking requirements, or does it increase? Um, well, does it also construction or expansion of any parking area, driveway, curb cut, or resurfacing of existing parking area? What was the first thing you were going to tell? Uh, I'm sorry. In yeah. use, the, the increase is the. My thing, my thing just keeps popping around. <laughs> the use of. Yeah, the 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 reference in the sanitary code refers over to a section of the zoning code. Um, 255-630-B, um, 2, 4, and 5. 2 is just a change of use from one category to another. I, I certainly don't think that applies here. Um, the other is an activity or land use which increases occupancy, occupancy limits of a building or increases site parking requirements. But that's an or. That's the, it it's one of the, just the first, right? It could be the first or the yeah. second only. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other is the conver a conversion, which you don't have a conversion here from you know, motel to condo or something like that. So that doesn't, so I think four is really the only applicable section. Um, are you increasing um, occupancy limits of a building or site parking requirements? Um, I'm not sure they do because I know they're eliminating some units. Um, so total overall site parking requirements. But it's still, it should be a yes or no, not a gray area. So it hmm? shouldn't, you know, it's a yes <laughs> or no, not a gray area. Well, are there or are they not? Yeah. So just to be clear, because it's a little bit of a unique situation, we have three buildings, mm -hmm. one of which is an office and motel now, the other two are just motels. Building one, two, three, as we call them. Building one is going to be half restaurant, I know I'm oversimplifying it, half restaurant, half, half um, office. Building two stays motel and building three stays motel. Two and three have absolutely no work associated in this project other than we're replacing the septic system in building two. Right. Well, it's not a, a situation where, you know, if you're not working on that building, you don't have to comply. If you're working on the site and you hit these <coughs> triggers, you're required to comply for the whole site. But are you increasing but the site it, parking requirements? Each building has its own sanitary system, and the code says it's a change to a building. There's no change to this building that has its own sanitary system. It doesn't system. say just that. I mean, you're, you're totally missing the provisions of the zoning code. So we, we think it's a change. I thought it was a change to the building or change. Yeah. Increases site parking. Increase it. Well, that's that's no the change you're talking. That's a different provision. Yes, increasing site parking requirements. Which uh, I think we're Eric and I are all in agreement from our calculations and from Ann's interpretation that it's actually a reduction. Well, so I think it's, it's a straightforward question. Well, that's that's what that's yeah. what they're asking. Just because if, if it doesn't do that, then the yeah. trigger's not met. Okay. But what about the increase in occupancy? occupancy? That's the question. Yeah, that's the question. Not the yeah, that that mm -hmm. I agree. It doesn't seem like it, it, I mean, we probably have to go by the fire marshal. I doubt that the, the occupancy is increasing in a building that is there. Well, not necessarily, I mean, we don't know that. I don't know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, the fire I think we have, to, we have to ask, yeah. So just to be clear, is it, it would be an increase in the occupancy in building three? Because that's the only building that's in question. One and two are getting new septic systems. Mm -hmm. So we need an interpretation whether okay, our so occupancy is changing in building three? 
Well, is, what, the, is the applicant totally against doing this last upgrade? The problem is, is that we actually have a, this was just recently redone by the, pre, you know, I can tell you a date, okay. but within the last few years. Okay. Building three. So it's new. Okay, so it's relatively new system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. And they do, as we said from the onset, we, we really do want to connect to the sewer and has have offered to uh, assist in that. Know, it's just, it's not gonna happen <laughs> for a little while. Um, should I just tell, I mean, I, I'm, I'm in support of this and I'd like to see it go to public hearing. I think we can move it along tonight, um, but I, I, I'd like to do a little research and find out the answers to those because questions. Maybe before. we need a letter from you, John, to the board. So you want? To, to settle this issue one way or the other. Or would you, you I, know, I can't determine occupancy limits. No, you can't. I mean, that's not fire something. Marshal. No, no, but can you. It's a fire marshal thing, right? So you're saying, so the, so, mm -hmm. I mean, we're adding a restaurant. That increases mm -hmm. occupancy. Well. That uh -huh. increases occupancy well, in a building that's already being but it's, given. Well, I don't think it's building by building. I don't, yeah. as I understand, what I'm yeah. hearing this, it's not about which building is involved, if any. We generalize. But it's, it's site parking requirements. Mm -hmm. So it would be the totality of the parking required, and so. Would, I right, think the planner agrees that, yes, the restaurant would require additional parking, but the removal of units reduces the parking. So I think you said there was a, I think we're a net reduction. One. So the in parking, like parking that we've added thus far is. So, so that, that's over parking. So we're talking about occupancy. There's, there's the, a number of buildings in the property that currently have an occupancy rating. We should find that number, then look at the new plan, what that occupancy number is. If it's not more, I think that they're good. If it's more, They've got to do it. I mean, it's straightforward. I think that's the only element that yeah. applies. All right. So, what's yeah. the practical? I think the other one's down. So, is this what's our course? Is this a question the for the fire marshal? I want to try to get a practical answer from someone on this, so rather than fight it out. Well, I think we also have to know if you intend to use the pool area and the decks. Well, that's the occupancy for that is going to remain the same. It's been the same for the last well, 30 a, years. That's, that's a separate thing. That's a different no, that's well, the answer to this question. All right, let's just, but right. let's, we're going to get to that. I think it is. Anyway. I think it's, they're related because if there's too much occupancy, it triggers the, the septic system and <laughs> it's, it's, it's too much I for the site. Understand that the occupancy is, is based upon a square footage calculation. It's not something that's movable based on what uses are on the property. The occupancy is something that's based in law based on the square I footage available. I think what, what so that's not I think what's happening change. actually is the parking, this is the problem mm -hmm. for me with the application, is the parking requirement's going down, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the occupancy is going up. Not necessarily, I, I you're making er, er, do you think Well, do, do, wouldn't do you a think restaurant add answer? more? Do you think you could help us find this answer of that was that was what the occupancy it's a, it's is? O just so you know, the fire marshal, fire rated occupancy is something that's very carefully determined based on floor, floor plans by the fire marshal. So, office. so it's not that something that we, we, we get an occupancy, right. we can base a decision on that. Yeah, I'm familiar right. with the occupancy ratings and the table in the fire code. Mm -hmm. I feel more confident in sending it to the fire That's what I mean, just help. Yeah. All right, right. so let's it's leave it at that. Simple answer. answer. So right. you can look at the difference because you have right. some increases in the restroom, wait. you have reductions have in the elimination right. of the rooms. Uh, yeah, I don't know where it comes let's out. Make all right, guys, let's bring it together here because we're kind of we, all Can we them. schedule a public hearing at, while at the same time as the letter is being requested? Do we have the resolution tonight to schedule a public hearing? Yeah, I, yeah I think we, it is. Do is we? it ready to, for scheduled public hearing? That's the last the, Yeah, period. the question is there, but. Well, you can do. Right, so we can, let's do this. Let's get the answer oh, from I the see. fire marshal and, and try to we'll have that resolution at the next meeting. So we're not tying it to, up too much. To schedule the we're hearing. really not. We just need that one okay. question. Next answer. meeting? Yeah, so next meeting we can have this back on the agenda with an answer from the fire marshal. And, and we'll have the resolution there at the meeting to schedule a public hearing. Mm -hmm. We'll try to be sure, do our best to get that done. And we're gonna go around to the okay. board. Okay. Right? I'm, not, I'm just trying to. Right, the only request I would make is that we move that process along. I know the last process where we had needed an interpretation from the building inspector took time. more than two months. Right. So if we could move that along. We'll ask er right. Eric to. Fire marshal that. moves faster. I, I, don't, I don't think the problem was on their end, but we'll look okay. at that. Okay. We'll, right. An element that probably we could have an answer. Yeah, I see not what you're by saying. By the time of the hearing, it would be right. probably satisfactory. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, okay, Nancy, so it's, I'm, we're, I'm we're going to the, all right. So uh, but, you know, where add? we stand. Same. Nothing to add. Okay. Well, I have a lot to say about this, but I don't think it's relevant at this point. It, I'm well, I'm let's get the answers. I, think it's, I don't think it's a bad idea to put anything you're thinking on the table because, um, you know, if you feel you need to. 
Well, I'd like, I, I'm, you know, I concur that we should get the fire marshal to give us an occupancy rating because that will determine the need for a new septic system for building three. Um, but I, I am concerned that the, uh, we had asked, even though I know the parking has been determined, but for the benefit of the public, um, we, you know, the, the spaces that are available on the site have not been put on the site plan, which we had asked for a couple of times, as I recall. So I'd like to see that done um, in terms of when the, the public hearing co comes, because this is an unusual circumstance where it's, there's grandfathered spaces for a certain number, um, but they're not pictured on the site, and I don't think they, they're not available on the site, so people should understand that. Um, I'd also like to see any areas of outdoor dining pictured, uh, or any place where food will be consumed, because I think that's another occupancy issue. Um, uh, I think I think that I think that that covers it for the moment. Okay, Ian. Yeah, in, in my mind, I think the parking issue has been resolved. We asked the question of the, the person, the building inspector who's in charge of that issue, and they gave us determination that your, your parking has, has actually decreased. Um, I think the occupancy issue is a very straightforward one. I think that the question we're asking is, look at all of the buildings on the property and, and get the occupancy for what it is now, and then after, if this project were to be approved, get that occupancy, and that will determine whether you need to upgrade the septic, and I think the answer is either yes or no. There's, there's no gray area there. Um, so the fire marshal will, will let us know. Um, obviously, I think the public hearing is gonna be incredibly important on this application, um, as it always is, but this application, I imagine there's gonna be some, some public comments. Um, I do think that, that uh, Kathy brought up a, a good point, which is the outdoor dining or, or sort of the elephant in the room that people are concerned about is the large areas outside where, where people might congregate and, and use this restaurant to to then stand or, or, or sit or, or whatever. And, and that's that's a valid concern. I think that it's our responsibility to make sure that we're putting a plan in place that um, isn't setting the table for, for abuse, just regardless of how well-intentioned this applicant may be. Um, Kathy brought up the outdoor dining issue, and I don't think that that's our answer because outdoor dining is defined in our code as service at a table of food with maybe ancillary beverage service. So. If we ask you to depict outdoor dining, we're not talking about preventing somebody from getting a drink or something else at the restaurant and then consuming it someplace else if they're not being served at a table. So our, you know, I know that's semantics, but it's pretty important in this case because our code clearly defines outdoor dining as food service at a table with maybe ancillary beverage service. And so I don't think that that's our answer. So. I think the question we have to, to answer and that the applicant can be very helpful is this is how do we prevent, you know, 500 people being served on a, on a lawn or, or, or congregating on a lawn because we're approving of, of a restaurant use? Yep. Because that's not part of the restaurant use. The change is ancillary yourself. You said ancillary. Well, you're absolutely right. But, but so, tables, so. And then you have open Margaret, you should lawn. come up, Margaret. Thank you, Margaret. Okay. You answered the question yourself. Well, the, the restaurant is defined as food service and the, so the serving of drinks is ancillary to that. If, the, if there are 500 people on the lawn, that's overwhelming the restaurant. That's not a restaurant people. anymore. And then so perhaps, if you're then defining where the restaurant should be, that's where the restaurant should be. Then it be. becomes a code enforcement. Right, right. Which, which is exactly, which has been you my need to do, You need to, do, to say on this site plan, where is that restaurant use going to be? Right, and then that's that's what's in your special permit requirement. There's a mob. So to, that's a, that's well, a code wait, 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 time out, Nancy, because you, you, there, there wouldn't be a code violation unless this is addressed in the application. If we simply approve it as it stands, as a restaurant with 16 seats, there would be nothing to prevent 500 people from being present on the property. Well, listing outdoor dining areas also doesn't prevent that. No, no, that, right. no I understand. That's right. But I think that, no. so let's... So that is the real question is whether or not an area on this property should be designated for the consumption no of, of well, beverages so that we cover the question right. or number of people on the property. But if These are all things my that point was if too many people showed up, 
then it would be a close enforcement. It, it wouldn't be unless we've put something in the. It, well, so it wouldn't be. It, it would not be. Yeah. Not, yeah. not as it stands. So. Really. Well, what about the, yeah, the no. fire capacity? Right, the we'll code, read the special permit standards. I, I, I think they're attached. You're supposed to, to determine where this occurs. You and state the that, and then and the they, they, they need to comply with that. And that's our tool. Yeah. That's yeah. it. I think we all okay. agree on that. Well, so is yeah. that so what you're saying? Let's go no, back. Well, no, to continue, yeah. I mean, what Marguerite just said is actually what I've been saying from the very beginning here, which is if somebody takes advantage and they start using this as a non-restaurant use, it, I think our mass gathering laws address that. I think that for, for the type of use that the community or many people are afraid of, you should be required to get a mass gathering permit. There has been concerns from other members of the board and I think the planning department that that's too hard to enforce and so we're looking for something else. However, if you look at how outdoor dining is, is, is defined, that isn't the answer because people could still then not get service but congregate as a, you know, sort of a takeout from the bar type of situation. So I think we have to be very, pretty precise with this if we're trying to address um, what the concern actually is. And if, if what Marguerite just said is true, that what we're all afraid of, if that automatically changes the, the, the use that we're approving, then I think we're good. Um, I, I will say there have been other ideas that, that I've, I've heard kicked around, such as not allowing alcohol consumption in the, the large lawn area, which I think is, is reasonable if, if the mass gathering laws or just the, the restaurant use doesn't have enough definition so that if it became you know abused, we would be able to stop it. Um, so I, I've also suggested earlier, and I think the applicants are reluctant to do it for understandable reasons, that you put a cap on the number of people who could be, particularly on the lawn area, I think is, is the, the place that most obviously could be abused. Uh, the applicant doesn't want to do that because that might be a high number based on the number of guests. Um, I'm only bringing this up now because it's going to go to public hearing. These issues are going to be brought up and I think we have to have an answer. I would have to have an answer to feel good about what we're approving is limited to what we intend to approve. Okay. Patty. Did Marguerite want to comment? You, you, you need to say where this is going to occur. If you're going to say that that whole lawn what, area is occur? part of this restaurant, then that should be taken into account in the parking. But we're not saying that. Okay, so just. Then we have to say it's not part. You have to say where exactly this is going to occur. And, and put that, put that on the plan. plan but that says and that. Then the well, I think the applicant. How do you the precisely applicant do make that? a proposal as to where you have the restaurant, and then you have what the deck, the deck area. Is there anything else that was proposed? The pool. Well, area. they were talking about the pool. Yeah. Okay. But, but I, I don't, I mean, I, I get that's the concept, but how do, you, how do you precisely say that? Right now, somebody could, could have a soda and a bag of chips on the lawn or by the pool. That's legal. If we approve this restaurant, do we ban that from happening? It's just not clear. Outdoor dining is defined in our code as table service. That's not what we're talking about being afraid of. So I, I get, I mean, we're all on the same page in terms of what we're trying to allow and not allow, but how do you precisely put that in the approval so that what happens is what we so intend. If, if it's going to be all over the place, then you need to provide parking for all over the place. All right, let's keep going around the board. We, and we'll, if we have a consensus that we want to deal with this, oh. I think we can still go to public hearing. And, I agree we're ready for public and, hearing. And deal, hear the public and deal with this mm -hmm. issue after the hearing. Because I don't, my sense is, this has been brought up several times, yeah. right, by the board. This is not the first time we've had this discussion. And I believe that the applicant has not been open to capping the number of people on the property thus far or limiting the drinks and whatever comes out of the restaurant consumption of to a specific part of the property. M mirroring what you're saying, um, you know, you're, you're going to have a public hearing. You've already had plenty of public comments. This issue has come up. It seems like there is a consensus among the board that you don't want to see a million people with, with alcoholic drinks on the lawn. The question is really how to how to make that happen. Right. And you're gonna get public comments, It'll, you know, the attorneys can look at it. Um, I think after we've received all that comment, maybe we can give you more direction as to exactly how you could word that. Um, if, you could, if you can word that, if it has to be a concession of the applicant, you know, I, I, I don't think we're gonna figure it out tonight. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I don't think we should wait till the public, we know the issue. There's nothing that's, well, maybe there's something that's gonna come out of the public hearing, but In, we know the issue, so to wait, 
as if somebody from the public is going to tell us how to how to precisely say what we intend to say is not realistic. So it's just we're what never going to say is process those comments and the attorneys will have an yes, opportunity they will tell us what to, say. Yeah, yeah. to tell you exactly that. If you want to sit, we're never going to get to a hearing. I want to move forward. I'm not saying so I don't. Then, so then pass the But I don't on. think that means we stop thinking about how no, to. We, no, we have to. We do. Well, well, we have to all think about it, but we can't answer it tonight. It's a, that's all I'm saying. I'm worried we're not getting any closer. Let's, but yeah. let, let's give yes. the rest of the board an opportunity. Um, <laughs> um, I'm still um, concerned about the parking. It is sub uh, currently what zoning is. I understand uh, the determination that we got. Uh, we do have an option of um, figuring the, the parking one per three rated capacity, which is also our option, another way to look at uh, the parking, in which case that would up the parking requirement to 15. Uh, I'm concerned about the five lots that they've put on South Emerson, that it has to be another 10 feet off um, the road it has, because that's town property, 10 feet, um, or I think it was 25 feet from the center line um, because that's the shoulder which is not currently there. So I have concern about that. Um, I have concern of a safety issue around that corner. Uh, it's a blind corner. You've got people uh, coming and going um, on the beach, trucks. People are gonna, we know that's a, a traffic issue. We know, I believe it's a safety issue. So I would like to encourage the board to put no parking on a couple of um, those lots so that when a car comes around or, you know, it, it's just there's no visibility there. I've also noticed that I went there recently and there's parking signs up there that say private parking. Uh, that is, does I, as far as I understand, it belongs to the town and not uh, to the to the motel. and. Uh, it basically says that if you park there, you know, it could be towed away at, at the public's um, person's ex expense. Um, I know that the Hamlet study is very concerned about the traffic issue, um, so that's a, another concern as far as um, just that we know that a lot of people take that route to avoid the town, and um, that's been brought out in the Hamlet study. Um, in addition, um, as we've mentioned briefly, that we have to delineate, um, it, you know, it says that it should be clearly deline delineated um, and whether or not it's allowed on the lawn area. There's currently huge tables there. So, um, you know, I, we have to, to work that out as far as how we can um, contain, contain this. And um, I know this isn't, I don't, well, I don't know, but I think if something was grandfathered and you have so many parking spaces, then just because they're reducing the, the motel units, that to me, it doesn't logically make sense that you get to reduce the, the parking requirement for that because you're already sub-zoning and you know, that's like having your cake and eat it too. So I am, you know, I am still concerned about the parking and obviously that we have to delineate exactly where food will be allowed. I don't know how we stop someone with a bag of potato chips versus, you know, someone with a drink spewing out on, onto the lawn. And let's see. Um, and, oh, I think that perhaps we need to talk to code enforcement and to see what kind of stipulations we can put on this um, to, uh, t so that they can enforce it. I don't want to say, you know, I, I just, I need some kind of limit so that we, we you know, it can be enforced because otherwise it's, it's just a free for all. But they can add limits that they don't add to other people. That wouldn't be fair, right? Well, right? let's, let's yeah, well, just... We have just limited... The, the site plan right oh, now. we can do we that. We need to yeah. decide that and if Specific you're places, can you have specific rules? You're deciding where this use can occur. The use is eating and drinking. For code enforcement, that's what we can and tell you them. Say that on, and you say that on the site plan, where right, you're right. able to eat yeah, and yeah. drink. Okay, that's and you provide the proper parking for those areas. Okay. Okay, Randy. That sounds well, good. I, you know, I'm leaning against this now because I don't feel like we're getting the, you know, I don't feel like we're getting the definition that we're looking for from the applicant. Um, so in the, in the special permit standard now it says, and this is the 255 550, in determining whether to issue a special permit for this use, a restaurant, the ultimate customer capacity of the restaurant shall be calculated. So 
So I guess we've done that by saying 16 seats. Um, the things that are still, I don't feel like the parking is adequate. I'm sorry, I just don't. I think they are already, they're using the public right away in order to put those five additional spaces in. They're gonna have to clear uh, a, a quite a lot of vegetation on the south side of the property, both to get to the proposed spaces and to create them. And the proposed spaces are placed right now where the entrance to the property is. Uh, you know, all in all, I think it's, it's pushing too much and refusing to def uh, define a real accessory use here. This is really supposed to be a restaurant for the use of the people that are staying in the inn. And I'm not getting that message. I'm getting, let's play this as loose as possible so we can use it as many different ways as possible without uh, violating our approval. But in fairness to the applicant, they haven't said that, which that we think that's a possibility. We're not really debating right now, Eric. It's oh, his okay. turn, then it's my okay. turn. I'm, I don't All mean right. to be, you know, let's just try to keep moving forward. We've, we've never, I, I've let's never seen the parking spaces chance, yeah. in the main parking lot delineated. We've asked for that. We, we really don't know how many cars can be accommodated in that lot. I'm not comfortable really with the five additional there. I'm not comfortable with the use of the public right away and to the signs. Uh, you know, the whole thing, uh, unless the applicant, from, from my view, uh, is more cooperative and is more willing to define the cap on this in a way that can be enforced, uh, I'm not gonna vote for it. Okay, um, my turn, I think. Um, I really, I do think we should get it to public hearing. I think the applicant has a right to get to a hearing. And there are, if anyone, a couple people requested a chance to speak briefly if they want to when we finish. Um, I have, my concerns for this project really have not changed from the beginning, which is that the 16 seat restaurant, if that's all it ever were, would not be so much of a problem, but unless there are some, for me, very tight restrictions on this about where people can um, stand when they're consuming drinks or food that they've bought from the restaurant, um, and, and the number of people that can be present on the site, um, I think it's really being set up for a situation where a couple hundred people could easily be there who are not guests having a good time, which I'm not opposed to that, but there's absolutely nowhere for them to park <coughs> on the parking. So I really feel that the town code, and we have a letter from the building inspector, I'm not questioning her analysis, but I think the code is really failing us in terms of our ability based on the code alone to um, provide sufficient parking. Um, so. I'm really at this point not a supporter of the project, but I am a supporter of getting it to hearing. Did you have something briefly, Ian, you want to add? Because I didn't mean to cut you off, but we just no. Did, but I mean the idea that it, we're not supposed to debate it, I think, is my, I misunderstand the, the purpose of the board. Then I, I don't mean any disrespect to Randy whatsoever. But I appreciate his insight. I just was saying that I think that I, I don't think that he was stating what the applicant has said their intentions are. What he was stating was our concerns about whether you know, a future owner's intentions may be or what may happen. Not that they've said that they want to do this. And so as somebody sitting up here and not an applicant, I want to speak up for what I understand their position to be. Um, but I mean, no disrespect to Randy whatsoever. I think the back right. and forth is healthy and leads to a better result. I think, so can I just respond to that, which is um, given the, the liquor permit and given kind of what's been said on the street and so forth, um, it doesn't leave the impression that a 16 seat restaurant is all that is desired to go on here. And, and I really think though, more than that, all that stuff, our job is to imagine anybody owning it, not the specific person that owns it now, and create a situation that no future owner can engage in something which is negative for the community. I agree 100%. Yeah, we had a yeah. request to yeah. first. Did you, Sarah, did you, did like you to want to come up or? Ms. DeFries. Yeah. 
I, All right, go ahead. I object to anyone having an opportunity to speak at a work session. Obviously, we're going to have a public hearing. The board has already said that you are going to that you're going to consider scheduling it for public hearing, and these people have the opportunity to speak at the appropriate time. I think it leads the board down a bad path and sets a bad precedent for other applicants where wherein these things start to take hours and hours and hours when they really shouldn't. Okay, thank you. We just, we have uh, from time to time, if someone comes, allow them to speak. At I'd just session. like my we objection to be noted for the noted. record. And just as a point of interest for the board, that lot that we're all talking about that's directly next door to the motel was purchased by the town board in 2003. I think Mr. Potter was on the board and probably sponsored one of those resolutions and was bought specifically for the purpose of parking. French? Yes. I think that was not for parking. That was I have the resolutions. I would hand I, them I'd in now if I, my understanding I, I will send them to that, Jody tomorrow for the record. That, that was open space. Was not. Okay, I'd love to see that. Yep. Thank you. Just we'll give you a minute if you mm -hmm. want. Just a reminder, is it's in, it's in your, board, your adopted policy that the public be allowed to have five minutes to speak. Oh. Thank you, Marguerite. <laughs> Let's keep it to two. That's your decision. <laughs> It's been your general. Sylvia said yes. Janet Van Sickle, 713 Old Montauk Highway. I live about somewhat less than half a mile from the Oceanside Motel. And you can't see on this particular slide, but the motel is located where Montauk Highway, Old Montauk Highway, South Delroy Road and Second House Road all converge. And as you can imagine, the sorting out of all of these traffic urgencies is no fun whatsoever in summer or any other time. I uh, would like to point out that on South Elton Street, there is public parking, town permit parking on the other side of one of the proposed parking areas. And I know that the town does not have enough code enforcement personnel to make sure that the parking that should be designated, that is designated and should be reserved for town townspeople is not going to be observed. I also want to point out that Kirk Park Beach parking, which is free to the public, is a very short stroll from the motel. And unless the motel, by only selling, let us say, food and drink to people who actually have a key card from the motel, thereby proving occupancy, if they would be willing to restrict the food and beverage activities to those people, then the town of the hamlet of Montauk would be very much more reassured that the public parking is not going, which is scarce in Montauk, is not going to be infringed upon. In addition, the motel has already stationed an employee with enormous beach bag, um, their um, enormous beach chairs with extra chairs and umbrellas at the access to the beach so that if their patrons would like to set up on the beach, they can do so readily. If you have 30 odd motel rooms and let us extrapolate to 60 odd patrons that are going to be set up on the beach with the encouragement of auxiliary food and beverage, which is almost certainly going to find its way to the beach, then you're going to turn a public beach into a private beach. And another concern is, of course, the septic. The town has declared over and over again its intention, its willingness, and its 
sense of urgency to pull back from the shoreline. And as groundwater is now uh, rapidly approaching ground level, the septic systems, even if they're the most advanced nitrogen controlling septic systems, cannot be considered appropriate for an area which is so likely in a strong storm to be inundated by Ford Pond, the water coming in. The IGA, which is just up the street, is considered one of the most vulnerable points in Montauk, turning Montauk into an island. In addition, the traffic patterns, the IGA, all patrons of the IGA must exit onto South Emerson Street. The parking lot for the motel must exit, the one in the front must exit onto Montauk Highway. All of those other establishments on South Emerson are anybody going west from those businesses is likely to wind up on this very unfortunate corner that is even in the beginning of June, stacked up with cars almost to the curb, waiting to get onto Old Montauk Highway to turn could, either could, east Could I ask west. you to wind up your comment? And I, okay, I'll there. wind up by saying that I really appreciate the thoughtful consideration that the board is giving to this problem, but I really hope that you will plan ahead in your minds for avoiding another situation like the Surf Lodge or the Sloppy Tuna. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Did any other board members have further comments? No? Okay, so I think that Sarah. we're going to be back. Oh, Sarah, you want to come up? Okay. Hi. Um, I agree with the- Tell us your name. Hi, I'm Sarah Conway. And uh, I agree that the traffic issue is, is paramount and, uh, and I believe that a traffic study needs to be done in this area. Because the traffic is uh, from IGA and 7-Eleven and the crosswalk there. Traffic is always backed up past the hotel, past Hero Beach, onto the highway. Memorial Day weekend already this year, it was backed up all the way to the dump. And so, and nobody's come up with a good solution. We've talked about these problems in the past of this, this IGA 7-Eleven crosswalk thing, and uh, nobody's come up with a good solution from that. That backs up the, the, uh, the roadway all the way to there. And, has, and, uh, and then the other three sides around the property all have no shoulder. And all the things that Janet said, the complications of the corner is a big issue there. Uh, that the, the parking for permit only, which is for people to be able to go to the beach there, is like will that, those spaces all be instantly taken up. And, and everything she said, people trying to come on the highway, it's that whole area is problematic right now without one extra car on it. Very problematic danger, uh, you know, safety issues. And um, so I think that a traffic study needs to be done, that if anything's being added to this area, um, what, are you, what are you considering uh, in terms of the traffic? And another thing is, if you're putting in this restaurant and how many more extra people are gonna be there, what about the taxis? Where are the taxis gonna line up? Where are they gonna drop off? Where are they gonna pick up? You've got three sides with no shoulder, and then you've got the highway, that is backed up. And so look, gotta look at the whole picture traffic wise. Um, you know, I'm with, with all of you, Job, that we, you know, yes, it would be nice for the restaurant to be able to have, uh, for the hotel to be able to have a restaurant for its patrons if it was kept, you know, contained and only the patrons were allowed to use it. But I think in the location of this hotel to expansion of use is not, uh, 
is not realistic with the, the, with the traffic issues that are there. And uh, so I highly recommend that you do a traffic study and also consider taxis, not just parking, but consider what an expanded use, all the aspects of an expanded use there. Um, and then uh, ap appreciate all the discussion that you've had on this and particularly how we are going, how to contain uh, and keep this from being hundreds of people on the property. And uh, if, even if you delineate the area where people can have their food and drink, um, my question beyond that is you also have to look further into, okay, if they break the code, first of all, is it enforceable? Even if you're saying, okay, people are in, have to be in this area, then what code enforcement has to come by and like, who's drinking, who's just standing, who's whatever. Like, so first of all, is it even enforceable, even if you put that? And then on top of that, if you are doing it and it's, you determine it's enforceable, then what are the fines on that? And are those fines going to keep anyone from doing business here? Because we've seen this a lot around town where people consider their fines as a cost of doing business. And so I think that that has to be considered into the, into the picture too, is not just say, okay, well, we'll just tell them they have to stay on that area. Um, but then what, what is gonna be the consequence? And is that consequence gonna keep them with people in that area or not? Is it just gonna be a fine and it's gonna go on and on? And I think that's critical. Is, is there a, a, you know, is the third fine gonna say we're gonna shut the restaurant? You know, it, or is it just the third fine going to be another, you know, dollar amount and they're making so much more than that dollar amount that it'll be irrelevant. So I think that's critical to consider there. And also just an FYI on that with the, with the beach furniture on the beach, uh, they've been given citations um, for that and have continued uh, to, uh, have the beach furniture down there in, in the same capacity. So um, uh, from what I understand, it's legal for them to have somebody carry the, the furniture on, but, um, and we call it furniture instead of a beach chair because it's not this little foldable beach chair. It's, it's a big, it's a big, these big dense uh, bean bags. Yeah, they're, they're huge. And, and so, um, uh, but then when the person leaves, the furniture is not taken from the beach. So I come down in the afternoon and you'll have one or two people on the, still on the chairs in the afternoon, but then you have tons of the chairs and the umbrellas all sitting there with nobody using them. And then their employee who's there on the beach the whole time with extra bags next to him, just sitting up near the dune and he takes dirty beach towels and gives them clean beach towels, whatever, hands out the clean beach towels and when they leave the beach, they dump the beach towels Sarah, with him. Sarah, could you wind up? Okay, so anyway, I just it, just so you know that they have, there is a place, it, it, already they're on record for have, getting citations and not changing their behavior according to the citations, okay? And um, I'm, I'm also very concerned about the, um, uh, what Patty was talking about, about the vegetation, if they're putting more parking spaces in there. So some of this we would save for the public hearing. Sarah, okay. Because we're okay. kind of so, uh, trying to be cour courteous, but. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, well, one thing, we, the, the determination that's been made by the, um, the building inspector in terms of the parking, uh, that it's grandfathered in, I would just like to say an awareness that the people that created that law at the time, I've been talking to them today, people who were involved in that, and that's not their interpretation of the law. I understand you may need to follow what the building inspector said, but I would encourage you to do a little research and ask the people that, they, that the whole point of that law was to restrict um, expansion of use if it was going to adversely affect areas. And so there, there is another side to this, and it's the people who, so if you ask the people who are involved, ask the people on the board who passed oh, the law. They have to go by what the, the law says. And the Sarah, law, can I ask? They have to go by. You're gonna make me look bad now for letting time. you guys okay. Yeah. come up. Okay, okay. So that's all. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Tiffany, would you come up for a minute? I, you can address any of this or not if you want, but I wanna wind up, make sure we understand where we're trying to get to in the next meeting. 
Um, the only thing I wanted to address was um, the woman had made a comment with regard to summonses and changes in behavior and characterizations of behavior, and I just want to say that um, the applicant has not been found guilty of any citations. They've received one and have not been found guilty of that. Just okay. to be clear for the record with respect to characterizations of their behavior. Okay, thank you. If the board has any other questions, I'd be happy to. So, so just, so we're going to try to get if we can from the fire marshal for the next mm -hmm. meeting in two weeks, the occupancy information. All I would ask is that it not take three months. And right, two months understood, to get there. I understand. Thank and you. we will um, try to have a public hearing resolution ready, provided the board is ready at that meeting to schedule a hearing. Thank you. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Uh, um, IGA at last, where are you, John? Mm. This has been uh, submitted to modify uh, an application, a special permit application um, that was approved in 2011 for a 5,000 plus square foot expansion of the supermarket building on the side here and a number of accessory structures. Um, the, the, that expansion required additional parking for the site and four of those spaces were put on the adjoining post office lot. And because there was more than one um, property involved, it was a site plan special permit for a multiple business complex. Um, there was also, at that time, the, the uh, post office eliminated an access that they had along the side of the building and are, were required to utilize an existing curb cut for the IGA for parking. Um, was the approved site plan um, and what are trees they are now proposing what they're mm -hmm. now proposing to do is trees separate they want to take the lot containing the post office out of the special permit the joint special permit for the multiple business complex um, presumably to be able to sell that lot separately and provide an easement over four parking spaces that would go from the post office building that would be given to the adjoining IGA building and then take the access, which it would be on the IGA building parking or property and give that access easement to the post office. So um, there are no physical changes proposed um, in the proposal. It's just ownership. Um, the town, the town, I know that the town's records indicate that Prini uh, Real Estate owns, well, owns, actually owns three properties. So it's not clear that this, um, that this one here has been merged with the post office. So we would, that would be an additional recommendation that we would make that we want to make sure that this is, was merged with that property since it provides the parking for the post office. Um, we, so we evaluated zoning separately in the two lots. Since they're separating them, this becomes a separate lot. And it appears that the, um, first of all, the setbacks for the parking, um, you, we think that you would need to evaluate under 255-653 whether or not to relax the side yard setback. Um, it adjoins another parking lot. It seems to meet the criteria for that. Um, but also coverage. Um, the maximum permitted coverage uh, is 80%. And when they did the joint um, multiple business complex site plan special permit, they were reducing coverage from 86 to 84.3%. So they were still over but reducing it. But a lot of the open space is on the post office building. So it's not clear to me, there's very little uncovered areas on the, the IGA parking lot. So it's not clear to me that they 
um, would not be, um, they may be increasing coverage over 86% because they added more parking on that side when it was already 86%. So if that's the case, they would need a variance from the zoning board for coverage. Um, so we recommend that they provide building and total coverage calculations for the total site to make sure they comply with zoning. Um, they all should also include the zoning district. Um, the title of the map should reflect uh, the approval that's being modified. In other words, um, this, we're modifying the IGA concrete slabs um, application and uh, the board needs to consider whether to relax the setbacks um, pursuant to 255-663 of the town code. Any board have questions for Joanne? I, I have a question. Can I, can we look at the site plan that we approved again? Yeah. Because, and, and it, it, it doesn't have to do with parking, but I, who was here? Weren't we, there wasn't there, weren't there some trees? Yeah. Like a pear tree or something yeah. supposed to be there? Yeah. What kind of tree? Yeah. Uh, yeah, right? One it's towards I mean, the east. What happened to the pear trees? Is it, I it's one tree? I've never seen. Well, Not that the big a deal, end. just one tree. It is. Yeah, and east. So, okay. I got it. Okay. okay. Well, not only that, it's not an invasive. Guys, we need to uh, I just use the microphone. To make sure that what we approved was actually. The, the, I believe that's done. also a subsequent modification that mm -hmm. had to do with fencing and. Okay. Oh, so the that's all. Everything's right. all been. But that. Legit. Okay. Just checking. They planted all the, the trees they're supposed to plant. <laughs> um, I don't know. I didn't <laughs> review that application. I did not. Oh. Thank you, Joey. It's I kind of a strange. I'll take a look at it for you and go if you'd like. But I, I guess we're we're curious. Go ahead. What was your question? Sorry. Let's let's hear from the applicant to explain what the heck's going on. It's kind of a strange application because yeah. basically when when the board looked at this previously, you did it as a multiple business complex, mm -hmm. and you the board could have at that time required a merger of all the parcels, but you didn't. So this is a single. It's a separate tax map parcel. Um, and they, they want to transfer an ownership, the ownership interest to that parcel out. And we're just trying, what we're really trying to do is we want to, want to make sure that to the extent that that parcel provides benefits to the IGA site, we want the, the, uh, the owner to provide documentation, some sort of an easement to provide for that and vice versa as far as access goes so that they, almost like you know with, yeah. with adjoining properties, we like to cross access easements and things of that sort. So it's kind of trying to make that all work, they don't propose to do anything different to the property, I think. It's just a, basically just could be a change of, of ownership. Right. Happy you know, so we're trying to figure and out how to make it. And it along that sure. line, <laughs> tax ma Suffolk County on still recognizes this, which is the town owned this at one point and then sold still, it to the still, applicant. Still showing separate? It's, uh, Suffolk County tax maps still show that as a separate parcel. Mm -hmm. So okay. as part of that, we want to make sure that that's merged with this parcel. You don't have an issue merging that in, do you? No, I'd love to get a chance. Why don't you get it come up, John? <laughs> Wait for two months, my chance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, we ran out of time. <laughs> John Tarvis, the applicant. Um, so, this all came about for the, the post office for sale. We have a buyer for the post office. It's a single and separate lot. We could, we could just sell a post office. Um, there's nothing stopping us from doing that. But in the exercise of caution, when we look at the building card, it calls it a multiple business complex. So it's important for the board to understand what a multiple business complex is, which is um, ideally it's a, a situation where someone has 10 acres and five acres zoning, and they could subdivide it and put two separate businesses on, on different lots. So the board says, you know what, you don't have to go, so the code says you don't have to go through subdivision. You can simply do two businesses on one lot. Um, that's the type of situation where a multiple business complex would typically come up. Um, I would, didn't handle the application when the IGA expanded. Um, so I don't know what the thinking was, but somehow somebody said, oh, you're, you're four parking spots short of being able to do your addition. And so it said, oh, multiple business complex. And so it said, great, that's a good idea. Done, done, boom. And it was, it was pushed through like that. 255-1142G of the code would have been a much better idea, which says that when you're short in your parking and you own an adjacent property within 500 feet or, or town-owned property within 500 feet, you can simply provide the parking by easement. Would have solved a lot of problems. Well, actually, there's not really any problem, but it would have been the better way to go, because it's not really a multiple business complex. There's actually a, a road, a separate parcel um, between the post office and the IGA. And Another separate parcel. Yeah. Um, it, it, in my opinion, never should have been called a multiple business complex. 
it doesn't have any attributes that you would typically associate with a multi-business complex. And it was already fully developed at the time. So it was always, the post office was already there, the IGA was always there. Um, so, so I talked, originally talked to, um, and the building department I talked to John, I talked to the plan department and said, you know, I think I talked to Eric originally, he's gone now, but he was like, oh, you know, I don't know what, you know. So um, rather than try to untangle this outside of the public process, we said, let's bring it to the planning board and say, hey, look, this, this is, we want to provide the four parking charge by easement, which is what 255.1142G um, provide, allows for, rather than this, what in our opinion was never a good idea, trying to call it a multiple business complex. It just simply isn't that. Um, so we prepared a, um, we prepared a site plan showing the four spots that we would provide by easement, and uh, we submitted it for your review. John, what about the, what about the coverage um, in the green space? Is there, are you selling to someone who's gonna operate the post office? Yeah, well the post oh. office has like I think a 20 year lease. So okay. the buyer would acquire the post office lease. So the, the post office would still be there. So is there, wh what does your client think about extending the easement to the green space on the lot, if that in fact was used for the so-called multiple business complex coverage calculation? Sure, so I just, we, um, we didn't know how to, we, we, there was discussion about what we would call it, like how do we get, to, I just wanted to come to you guys and say, hey, here's the problem, here's how we're gonna solve it. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of discussion amongst uh, us about, what, what, you know, the subdivision is a site plan modification, what is it, you know? We wanna provide these spots by easement, which is what 255.1142G provides for, rather than this, Multiple business complex idea. Um, I think calling it a modification of the site plan is not really that accurate. It's we're not trying to modify anything. The site plan, the IGA was built, approved, has a CO. It stands by itself. Um, we're not trying to change one blade of grass on this property, or, or for that matter, the post office property. Um, we're simply saying that the correct way to have done this back then was to provide by easement, um, and it's better to just come to you and say hey, look, this is what we should have done then to try to deal with it through the building department. So um, what, is it, what about that middle property, the third parcel, uh, what is that? That's a road. Who owns it? The town did own it and now the uh, same person owns that park property as well. So the three properties are all owned by the same person? I think it's four, right? Uh, yeah, it's four. But four? Actually, no, <laughs> yeah. Wait, how, how is it? Oh, four, I see, oh. four, yeah. Mm -hmm. So ju just to try to, let me just ask one question yeah. back there. I, I would just like to add that I think that part of the thinking of making a multiple business <coughs> complex was also that the IGA was over coverage. That's they not true. Be, they would have been just not true. They would they are adding parking and they would have been increasing coverage it's over not what true. they had the at file that has time. You're making that up. And so therefore oh, by by the combining the two, yeah. they were able to show that they were reducing coverage and not need a variance. Well that's so That's not true for a number of reasons. Where'd you go, John? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so not true. Uh, you have a survey that shows that you're not over coverage? No, the property the IGA was over cover coverage then and it is now. It always has been over coverage. Over? The IGA has, yeah. Oh, it is over. Yeah, it's over. So, yeah. What, are you, so what are you asking us? Multiple business, first of all, read the code. Multiple business complex does not allow for over coverage. There was no, it actually says the opposite. And I can no, put the up question, But the here. question is, if this, you're asking us to sort of bless the idea that these post office can be sold with an easement over those four parking places, right, on the post right. office property right. that still apply to the IGA. Right, right. So. And the question that the planning department is raising is once this is done, will the IGA parcel be a conforming commercial parcel in terms of coverage? Or will it be? Well, the answer that, is no. Right? The answer is that when the IGA expanded, well, let's say that um, before the expansion it was 83% coverage. Right. Afterwards it was still 83% coverage. The coverage on the IGA parcel never changed. So it doesn't need the open space on the post office parcel to be included in the calculation? Right. It does not. And, and, and the reason, the major reason for that is that if you read the definition of multiple business complex, it says you can't do a multiple business complex if the coverages aren't less than allowable coverage. It's the opposite of what the planning department just told you. All right, so. It's very, she's making it very confusing. It, the idea here is we're trying to provide four spots by easement. So, so do you have, a, a, just a, do you have a, <coughs> Do you have a survey, a site plan of the IGA parcel with the coverage calculations on it? Because I think that's... I think we probably do, yeah. Let's see if we can't get that to the planning. But it, it would be over 
It's, it, it never changed. It was the same in 1970, 1980. The coverage. So you're saying it's pre, it would be pre-existing non-commercial, uh, non-conforming? Well, um, come up, Joanne. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come up. All right. Coverage on that parcel, the co coverage was 86% on the parcel. And the, ma the IGA alone. IGA alone, the okay. maximum permitted was 80%. So they were pre-existing non-conforming at 86. Okay. Then they added more parking spaces to the site. So I'm Where where was that on the site? Hmm? Where were the additional spots that they were added? That was reconfigured. It was reconfigured. It was reconfigured. I can't it's exactly point, point, point that uh, about it. So we're just saying give us a, a a a survey showing that your coverage did not go over the 80 86% now. If so, then you would need a variance for that amount. We would need, we would have needed a variance for that. Right? I don't think it, that was addressed properly. I don't, if you so needed right. it, it wasn't addressed so properly. So we have a CO for the IGA, <laughs> and we're not trying to, so that's the thing is, I'll just, I'll just, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna re-site plan a building so that has a CO. CO. We have a CO for the IGA. IGA parcel separate well, no, from the post office. Um, but that's a very confusing, you have to yeah. see the card. It has things about the um, dry cleaner so on it. So can you guys, could you give well, me, well, I go ahead, Randy. Well, well, see, uh, the way I'm looking at it is that you, You've in effect combined the two par parcels, even though you didn't merge them, in order to get more parking and to come more into conformance with coverage. So that's where I disagree because okay. multiple business conflict, there's only four paragraphs to multiple business complex, and paragraph three specifically says you can't use this paragraph to do anything about coverage. Like there was never any discussion about, hey, let's, let's play with coverage here. Multiple business complex specifically says, and the I idea, I don't know why, I think the idea was that when you're subdivided, because again, it's meant for subdivisions um, and to prevent have someone having a subdivide, but they wanted to prevent people from uh, overdeveloping properties, I guess. But um, so it, the multiple business complex never had anything to do with coverage. And you can look uh, through the file. I mean, it's a thick so file. Do, what we don't want to do is mm -hmm. create something that's non conforming mm -hmm. without your having to get a variance. So can you provide yeah. information to the planning department? that shows what the coverage numbers are on the IGA parcel? Sure, and but it, it is over, it is over. Well, let's see what those actual numbers are, so at least we're not debating. So it's pre-existing non-conforming at 86%. The right. object would be to show that it didn't go over the 86%. It hasn't changed. It, that it didn't become, in, all right. Would you yeah. try to work this out with these But guys? here's the thing. If it did go over 86%, this, this has nothing to do with the parking spots because That was part of the that approval. Had, if the IGA parcel all by itself went over the 86% mm -hmm. all by itself, but then it would have needed it. But when you included the multiple the um, post office parcel in the multiple business complex, then it didn't go over 86%. Then it was approved. Then that multiple business complex was okay. But no, but that's that's it, it didn't. There's no such thing as not needing a variance because you have a multiple business complex for coverage. Yeah, it would have needed a variance then. Coverage. These properties were never merged. So, but I mean, well, I guess. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the kind of is the the that we, we were twist here is that these are still single and separate parcels as far as ownership. They're not merged into one lot. So it's not like he's, he's not asking for a subdivision. So maybe that was the confusion oh. in the first in Maybe. The first I mean, I can. They looked at it as one parcel. I think so. The, the, the right. spots I think will remain. It's happened. just it's like the owner. I can't figure out why they did it the way they did. The, 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 the terminology right. is different. Right, this well, is actually, the, the, we had, um, when, when the IGA was approved for the expansion, they were four short spots short. So someone said, put them on the post office property. Which happened. Well, now we're selling the post office property. And they, um, there's, nothing, there's nothing requiring the new owner to necessarily, so we, want, we wanted to put it as an easement. Designate those From this spots. board's perspective, you'd want to preserve the parking that was required for the expansion. So you're doing the right thing. But what about, what about the post office lot after, after oh. this? Then so does it, does it's it recover really on its own? And can you expand that building? Right. Both right. comply with uh, I, that's the building what I'm coverage. curious about. Like, I think that it would be difficult to expand the building based on parking. I don't know that for sure. They're not two separate. Could, could, we, could we request the, I, I feel like we're spinning our wheels. Yeah. Uh, we could ask uh, Patty, I'll come if you want, meet with John and Joanne, and I'll, we can get a couple planners. We'll sit down with you, try to figure this out. Okay. Is I don't know that. But it's the only question about whether we need a. And my question is, if we need a. Is that a legal question? And actually, can I just meet with 
the town I don't, to decide. You can position. meet with John uh, by all means, but we, but I think you're still going to somebody's going to need to see numbers for that IGA property as it stands can, as a single we, and separate property. Can we get numbers? I can for guarantee the other one it's on Yeah, we should have. What's we that? We just need to do some homework. We need on this coverage one. Yeah. It's, on it's both, both properties. This is another. Both comply with building. It's another it's question we're not going to answer tonight. Coverage. Sorry. But not with total coverage. That's the question. I just think that if we're going down the road of requiring a variance, which would be ridiculous, uh, it'd be, uh, nothing's changing, right? So if you said, oh, we need a variance, it, that's a year long process. We're not we're saying anything. Not. We're just saying we don't have the facts to say mm -hmm. anything. But I do know, I already know that the. I well, you know might know, know, John, but. But you yeah. so, but <laughs> it's not being. <laughs> providing not a survey gets to the point where you just, we need a variance, then we're just not going to do so it. <laughs> we're not well going to do that. Then yeah. okay. figure something else out. I mean, right. it's just. Yeah. We're, yeah, I, I would suggest you to get a few people in a room or talk to John and try to make some logic out of this, okay? And we're we have to give this the uh, setback um, 10 we, feet. Right, we would have to address the setback. Right. That was something I heard, I heard tonight for the first time. All right, okay. Uh, Which I don't have a problem. All right, I'd like to, okay. I'd like to go to the board, Patty. Setback, is that what you're suggesting? Patty? Yeah. We'll try um, to help you with this. I think group. the other issue is the relaxing of the setback, and I don't have an issue with that because okay. it's not next to a residential property, I think. Spots are there. Right. Also. Okay. Ed. So. Yeah. I'm gonna, not to keep talking about this over and over again, I think we need to kind of clear up some technical issues here. I think, you know, the intention of the, I understand the intention of this. Let's just make sure we're doing it the right way. We're not creating some non conforming situation on either one of these parcels. And this is something for the planning department and you know, yeah. All right, Kathy. Yeah, I agree. I think if you can get together with Patty and the planner and just, you know, get, get these questions answered, then we'll have a better. We'll be better able to help you with it because yeah. I don't think it's a complicated thing if we can all agree on the basic uh, foundational principles. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it sounds like honestly the error is in the way that the application was made and how we viewed it before, and, and that exactly. that's a shame. If we're looking at one as one property and it's not, um, we shouldn't. I, I do want to bring up though that, that during the previous application, and I was on the board, the applicant was really concerned about a neighboring property to the east and and sharing parking. And so there's some irony here that they want to sell a par <laughs> parcel with an easement, parking easement over it. I mean, I guess the easement language would determine that they wouldn't have any right to have a problem there, but something about that doesn't sit right. Um, and I, you know, I think that you can understand that. Uh, that being said, I, I do think the applicant has a really good point about if he's saying they're over coverage and all he wants to know is if they need a variance, if, the numbers he gives us, I, I think that he could probably get that answer from John, and I would hope that the board would go along with whether a variance is required or not. Um, I guess, is, is it normal to have a parking easement over a neighboring property in a situation like this? I mean, is that something we, that's? Yeah, I mean, we're just, we're, then, then my, my solution, I think. You know where you've seen it is in Amiganza Square with the, um, the yoga studio yeah. uses the same 500 square, they use it for town parking. Well, I do think we have to get a legal opinion about whether a variance is required. I don't think we need to see a ton of numbers to, to get that opinion, but um, whatever information we need, we'll, we'll see it. I, I think that, that my attitude would be, um, we would put some sort of covenant on the post office lot to not allow them to then have more coverage if that coverage was given to the IGA in essence in the last application, so that mm. we're truly locking it into place. Well, we don't carve it out. I mean, good. if you dedicate certain could add spaces, that. So to me, that, that's truly iron, it's truly totally locking the situation fair, uh, as we intended it and maybe just correcting an error in how we look at the application. Great. That said, I, I, I want to reiterate, it doesn't sit quite right with me that there was such a fuss raised mm -hmm. that, frankly, w went against good planning to block off another property from using their parking. So, um, you know. Randy. Uh, I pretty much agree with Ian. I'd like to... I, I don't have a problem with the easements. I don't have a swapping the easements. I don't have a problem with relaxing the setback. But if the the post office open space, for lack of a better word, uh, was was part of the mix in the the overall approval before, then I think that should also be part of the easement. Uh, that it that it should be. We, we shouldn't we shouldn't separate these and then allow the post office to expand so that we end up with more coverage than we would have otherwise this shouldn't this shouldn't allow sure. for more coverage than yeah. is allowed now you want to preserve the existing conditions yes 
Okay, Nancy. I have nothing to add. Okay, so I agree with the board. I mean, I think what's being said is if the, this is why we need the calculations on the IGA parcel. If some of that, I can't see where there's any open space on the post office, by the way, but. It's, you know where it is? And you, it's and in you the front lawn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you drive by it next time, you'll go, oh, there it is. It's, in, it's uh, between the parking and the building. There's a single right, it's very, right. oh, okay. it's, very it's very tight. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just see what the numbers are because. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, all it. right, so I think we yeah. talked to John. We'll try to resolve this. I, nobody's really opposed to the concept. Okay. All right. Right. Okay, let's go to. Um, do we have urban renewal stuff to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. All right, so let's go to the community boat shop approval. In the matter of the application of the community boat shop and new shed um, for site plan approval uh, for a shed for storage of small craft, uh, which are waiting for restoration. Um, I have read the resolution and move for its Second. adoption. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed and carried. Uh, Daymark's modification. Now the application of Daymark's additional permit, site plan special permit, um, to modify uh, landscaping features and a few other uh, uh, I've read the resolution and move for its adoption. I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Passed and carried. I think that's all of our resolutions. Yeah, we, we, did, we did Elmwood. Is that oh, scheduled oh, public oh. hearing for mobile? Mobile was taken off, I believe, wasn't no, it? No, but this is just, uh, hang on a second. Sorry, wait, slow down. What's that? I, I noticed that um, there's an affordable apartment on it, but it doesn't, this one doesn't make reference to registering that with the is that El is that Elmwood? Yeah. All right, so let's get that. Let's take that. a look at. Well, let's, we're going to have to fix it. We approve it, so I have to back up. I make a motion to approve it with the conditions that Joanne just suggested. So, with so with who, the, the, the standard, standard yeah. conditions. So yeah, they need air. I'm sorry, that's my We need actually. another. Okay. Uh, they need air to be approved. Right? So I guess just at the next meeting, we can do a modification. Really? Okay. That. Okay. Good. All right, Idea. great. Thank oh, you. Okay. okay. So, but the mobile resolution was taken off the but agenda. This is to schedule 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 schedule. Schedule. But I think we were going to have a discussion because they were on the work session, right? No, I thought you were scheduling the hearing. So what was? The, okay. So the letter we got from mobile was what was that about they the date? They wanted to do this. They want. We already scheduled the hearing, right, Joanne? They didn't notice it properly the they first time, so they had to reschedule. So we're rescheduling. So we're rescheduling. So okay. This is responding to that request. Okay. Yes. Right? Yes. 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 Okay. I just <laughs> in the matter of the application of the mobile generator uh, site plan to schedule a public hearing to be held at Town Hall 159 Panago Road, East Hampton, on Wednesday, July 11th at 7 p.m. or as soon thereafter as this matter may be heard to consider said application. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Pass and carried. Uh, motion to adopt the minutes. Oh, yes. Second. All in favor? Motion Aye. to adjourn. Adjourn. Aye. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay.